Sunday baseball on the ACC Network Extra as 12th ranked North Carolina and 3rd ranked NC State meet for the final game of the series. Along with Adam Gold, I'm Andrew Sanders. Here's highlights from last night's win for North Carolina. They got a strong start from Austin Bergner. Austin Bergner with big league stuff, according to NC State head coach Elliot Avent, going up against Brian Brown. Brown had not allowed a home run all year long until the Tar Heels touched him for back-to-back -back shots in the fourth. Michael Bush and Kyle Datris. It was a lead that the Tar Heels would never relinquish. State made it close in the ninth inning with back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back home runs. Will Wilson second of the game, Evan Edwards and, pa and Patrick Bailey, and then a great play by Zach Hagan to retire Stephen Patera to close it out. Tar Heels win at 8-6. So the Tar Heels with an 8-6 win last night. They have taken the series. He's Adam Gold. I'm Andrew Sanders. Glad to have you here on the ACC Network Extra. So North Carolina now has done something in Raleigh they haven't done in a long time. Uh, since 2007, they haven't won a series. They've never swept a series. A lot of pressure on Johnny Piedmont to, to keep NC State close, and hopefully the bats get going for the Wolfpack and when it's not too late because they've been a little too late, uh, too little too late so far in this series. Uh, it's five-run lead for the Tar Heels going to the ninth inning. Too much to ask although the Wolfpack did make it interesting. All right, and now we get a look at the NC State starter, Johnny Piedmont. He has battled through injuries his whole career, and that has been his story this season as well. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of typical. I think uh, not a lot of people were expecting a ton out of Johnny Piedmont at the start of the season, and he got off to such a great start. Uh, especially fans around here, you get attached to players. I think there's a lot of people really rooting for Johnny uh, to make something out of his was second senior season but look he's pitched very well when he's been able to get on the mound uh he's got made one uh, one start in his career against north carolina he has pitched well but he has only pitched seven innings in april so if north carolina state is going to have you know a lot of postseason success he's going to have to have something to do with it uh, so i'm sure that that uh, elliot avan and scott fox will kind of manage his workload between now and the end of the season and try to keep him uh, viable as you get to Durham over at the ACC tournament, but we'll see how he does today. Uh, but he's got to give him, you know, four or five innings at least. He, certainly, State has a bunch of guys available in the bullpen. First pitch of the ball game is driven in the left field. Dallas Tester doesn't waste any time. He's got extra bases. Didn't uh, even give me a chance to introduce him. Well, he was very impatient. Uh, but look, he's been a table setter for uh, UNC. They are now eight. What, eight and one with him in the leadoff spot after winning the first two games of this series. And he was not great yesterday, uh, but he has been very good for them. Here's the lineup for Carolina today. Clemente Inklin, the DH, as Cody Roberts moves back to the catching position, and Ashton McGee is back in left field. And here's where the, uh, the thunder began for North Carolina yesterday in the fourth inning when Michael Bush and Kyle Datris went back-to-back -back off Brian Brown. Piedmont. They got Tesser in a rundown now. And Bush unable to get to second as well. A base running mistake for Tesser. Got caught leaning towards third. Uh, he did. You got to make sure the ball gets through. Got You know, the pitcher is in front of you as well as the base runner on second base. Uh, but well played by NC State to make sure you're running Tesser back to second. Uh, and Michael Bush doesn't run well enough to have been able to, uh, to advance on the play. So uh, a big win for NC State. Ball wasn't hit too badly, uh, but Piedmont feels his, feels his position, makes the smart play. And NC State kind of catches a little bit of a break. No, that ball was hit really well up the middle. Sharply hit by Bush. And so first two pitches from Piedmont have been hit hard. And Datris doesn't have a chance to hit that. We'll see how well Conley does behind the plate. Patrick Bailey had played the last 16 games behind the plate for NC State. Conley hasn't had a start in behind the plate in 23 games, I believe. Uh, Piedmont tested his mobility right there. So Bush on first now, one out. Datris is three for seven in the series for North Carolina. He scored four runs. Really look at this duo. Bush and uh, Datris 
eight runs combined, they've been getting the job done. Lethal. Lethal. Two of the best hitters in the conference, two of the best hitters in the country. And uh, in conference play, North Carolina's got the best offensive numbers. Dadgers fouls back the 2-0 fastball. So obviously they've been getting on base. The guys behind them, Riley, Freeman, Roberts, McGee, have been getting them in. Uh, but they've driven in some runs as well, which we showed you in the highlights to start off the show. The back-to-back -back home runs. The Datcher's home run off the first pitch after Michael Bush went over the right center field wall to make it one nothing. Just good hitting. Patient on a curveball that Brown kind of hung over the middle of the plate. Conley with a snap throw back down to first. And that was close. Boy, Carolina, we've already seen one base running <laughs> error in this right. inning. If you're Michael Bush, you can't get picked off a of first like this. That was and, close. Mm. I think he was in, but that was, uh, that was a lot closer than it needed to be for Michael Bush. Good quick snap throw from Conley. And it's a 3-1 count. Runner goes. He can hold up because it's a walk. Yeah, the, uh, the Tar Heels two and three hitters are incredibly dangerous. That was a brave move, though, from Michael Bush, who's not a great base stealer on a 3-1 pitch. Now we'll see the, uh, the cleanup hitter. Brandon Riley has been very good in this series. Two for six. He's also drawn three walks. He's been on base a ton. Tar Heels in business in the first. You know, for a guy who throws, who's, uh, who looks as imposing as Johnny Piedmont does uh, on the mound, not really a hard thrower. Only 27 strikeouts in 37 innings. So he's not, uh, he's not bringing 94-95. Riley finds a hole through the right side of the infield. They will not test Deathridge out and right. Bases loaded for North Carolina. And so far, we're seeing Piedmont get squared up. Uh, yeah, that, that ball was hit pretty hard. The uh, kids watch Brock Deathridge hit the, lead, uh, hit the cutoff man. Number eight. Keep stressing that. You don't have to throw it all the way to the plate. Uh, but they were not going to test Deathridge's arm anyway. Again, Michael Bush. I would, I would say that's not great base running there for Michael Bush. you got to be away a little bit quicker on a ground ball. It's a force play. And it wasn't like it was a line drive at Deathridge. So uh, very cautious base running from North Carolina there, but it worked to state's advantage. Ike Freeman has come up with the bases loaded quite a few times yeah. in this series. Certainly Friday night, everybody will remember. That was a good curveball from Piedmont to start him off, keep him off balance. Freeman, two for ten in the series, the big two RBIs. In the eighth inning on Friday night, he actually has struck out three times in this series, which is rare to see from him as he falls into an 0-2 hole. Back-to-back -back curveballs from Piedmont to start him off. A little cooler today, about 20 degrees cooler. Yeah, dropped significantly. You said summer was here last night. It, it was, it just stopped by on its way somewhere else. We're going to have summer this week, though, trust me. Still a pretty day. Not, not cold by any stretch of the imagination, just not 78 like yesterday. You can get away with, uh, with long sleeves if you wanted to sit out in the sun. Just off the plate for Piedmont. And he throws a cut fastball. And that's a good take up, yeah. from Freeman. Conley set up outside just off the plate. He hit the glove. Could have gotten the call, but it was, it was off. Freeman gets another breaking ball. 
and hits this into a difficult spot. Jarrett makes the catch. Is it going to be deep enough? The throw to the plate. Collision at the plate. Bush knocks over Conley and scores. And Jack Conley. We're hearing some. Oh, boy. The bench is clear. NC, NC State, NC Elliott Avent is doing his best to keep the peace here. Everybody's coming out. A lot of words exchanged. No contact other than the play at the plate. No, the, the, the throw was up the third base line a little bit. Conley went out to make a play and apply a tag. And Bush ran through him. The, uh, I guess Elliot Avon is looking for uh, runner interference. Boy, we just got started, Adam, and yeah. the benches have already cleared. Oh, uh, well, just, uh, just another Sunday afternoon in uh, ACC baseball. Be interesting to see if there's, if there's any discussion at all about whether or not there's interference there. I know in, uh, they've, they've changed the rules so much in Major League Baseball. How does it filter down to the college game? I'm not really sure. It's a good thing that uh, Conley is in pretty good shape. He's back behind the plate. All right, finally we have a look at it here. This is a ball, obviously, you would want Deathridge to catch. Yeah, I don't understand why Deathridge is not calling him off. He's coming in. He has the stronger arm. I think if Deathridge makes the catch, then Michael Bush might not even try it. If uh, if Conley holds on there, he's probably, I, I do believe Michael Bush is out. Throw took him up the line. You know, the interesting thing is, I think that that's just one giant overreaction, I think. I mean, Conley was laying on the ground. Nobody, nobody went over and said anything to Conley. To me, that's baseball. No need to do it. No need for benches to empty. Home plate umpire Kevin Sweeney warning both benches, I believe, here. I'm just glad that Conley is okay because he did take a, uh, it was trucked by Michael Bush, who's not a small guy. So they, they charged Conley with an error on the play. Yeah. That's a tough error. Well, that, I don't see how that would be an error on Conley because the throw took him way up the line and into right. contact. And I guess the uh, the thought was that he had the ball. Yeah, no. And then uh, I'm not sure he ever really had it. So Bush made contact towards yeah. Conley's head, and right there, both players on a collision course. You didn't see anything no, dirty there, in that play. To me, there was that, that's baseball. He, uh, Bush didn't go out of his way to, uh, you know, to throw his shoulder in or to, you know, reach to make contact. It's just baseball. And again, I'm just massive overreaction, I think, on the part of uh, really both teams because there was no taunting, no jawing. It was just a baseball play. So the batter is Clemente Inklin. And he sees a 2-0 count. And the, uh, the, the error, really, it's not an error, but the error is that Brock Deathridge doesn't take charge of that play coming in with the stronger arm, not to mention the better angle. And I don't think Michael Bush even attempts coming home on that play. Uh, yeah, I would agree if, if Deathridge catches it. I don't think you can, you can take off. Part of the reason he was able to take off is because Jarrett's going back, his momentum yeah. taking him away from home play. I mean, good, and a good throw gets him anyway. But even uh, as awkwardly as Jarrett's angle was. 
And Piedmont walks Inkland on four pitches, second walk of the inning. Well, we said he hasn't pitched much in April, has not been sharp here in the early going. No, uh, he had the uh, the walk to Datris with, uh, with Bush aboard. Uh, the first two pitches were hit pretty hard. Uh, even the, uh, the pop-up to shallow right was a towering pop-up. And Cody Roberts, uh, Ken, he, he delivered a, he, I believe he homered last night. He did. He His only hit of the of series, Brown. it was a big one. Yeah, he had the home run off of Brown to uh, extend the lead to, uh, I think that made it 4-2. Tar Heels already with one across, threatening for a lot more here. But there's two away, looking for a timely hit. You know, Johnny Piedmont, you mentioned earlier, has only pitched one time against North Carolina. It was in really this exact same situation last season in Chapel Hill. Carolina had won the first two yep. games of the series. They were really relying on him to pick up a win, and he did in five strong innings. Yeah, they need him today. They, I mean, I don't think they need a lot out of Johnny Piedmont today. They just need him to keep State in the ball game long enough to get their bats going because they didn't use a lot of, uh, spend a lot of relief capital last night. Brian Brown lasted into the seventh. So pretty much everybody's available for, uh, for Elliott Ava. It's by Conley. Here comes the second run for North Carolina. Datris slides home. Third run that Carolina has scored via a wild pitch or a pass ball. I think that'll probably be a wild pitch, although, again, like I said yesterday with uh, Patrick Bailey, the first one that was scored a wild pitch, uh, it wasn't so egregious that he shouldn't have been able to keep it in front of him. I think Conley probably wants that one back. Yeah, to me, that's a pass ball. And right. to your point, we have seen those mistakes start to mount for NC State in this series, mistakes that they really haven't made all year. Yep. And those kind of things, you go through, uh, you can go through slumps that way too. That's inside on Roberts, ball three. Yeah, and you have first base open now, uh, so you don't have to come in. You don't have to give in to Roberts. But uh, while Ashton McGee struggled yesterday, uh, you know he's a dangerous hitter. He's probably raised his average, what, 80, 90 points the last month or so. He got off to a dreadful start. Payoff pitch. Hit on the ground to third. And a good play by Dylan Cooper ends the inning. But North Carolina gets two runs on two hits, a couple of walks in the frame. The bench is cleared in the top of the first. What do we see next? Bottom half coming up in a moment. Back here with Adam Gold, I'm Andrew Sanders. Here's a look at the ACC standings entering today. You see North Carolina, the best record in the conference at 17 and six, taking the first two games of this series. And for NC State, they've now fallen to second in the Atlantic because Clemson has gone two and zero this weekend. Florida State has gone two and zero this weekend. So teams around the Wolfpack starting to make up a lot of ground. Uh, no question. You know, a couple of weeks ago, it looked like NC State was going to cruise to the Atlantic Division title. The, t the Tigers have passed them now. Uh, in spite of the fact that Clemson was uh, was beaten in a home series by Miami a few weeks ago. The Tigers are playing well. Uh, Clemson is a game ahead, uh, and they have won, I believe, five straight in conference play uh, going to today. By the way, Miami has scored just one run in the two games at Florida, against Florida State in this series. And they're, uh, they're playing their Sunshine State series this weekend. The Hurricanes... And they have fallen, offensively fallen on hard times. Tyler Baum gets the start today for North Carolina. So McLean tries to jump on the first pitch. He had been their Friday guy after yep. Luca Delatri went out with an injury and shifted in this series to now the Sunday role. So you got to think the Heels are pretty confident with him on the mound on a Sunday. Yeah, and he's actually pitched really well lately. I think the, uh, the switch to moving him to Sunday is probably to get him ready for that role. 
uh, because I assume they, they expect Alatri back pretty soon. So if uh, North Carolina wants to run Delatre, Bergner, and Baum out there every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, that's pretty good, especially heading into the ACC tournament in Durham. But Baum has pitched really well. Uh, he's, oh, he's only allowed seven earned runs in his last 21 innings pitched. He strikes out McLean. Roberts shows off the arm, one away. So the numbers are really deceiving for Baum. The 442 earned run average coming in. He has really pitched well of late. Hasn't been able to get very deep into games, though. Although, with the start that Bergner gave him yesterday. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, North Carolina, even though they had to use two of their better relievers yesterday, you have to think just about everybody's available. You might not see Daniels. You might not see Lancelotti. First pitch swinging his kid, and he pops up in foul territory. And this is a guy that has been the guy for NC State all year, has been held in check in this series. He has struggled. He struck out three times yesterday. This guy hasn't uh, been held in check, though. Will Wilson put a charge into three different balls last night. Kenneman now just one for nine in the series. Baum throws it three feet in front of the plate. Here's what the three through five hitters have done in this series. You see last night the four home runs. Right. All of them solo shots, though. No one on base. Correct. Well, there were seven home runs hit combined yesterday, and they were all solo home runs. Yeah, how often are you going to see that? I mean, it's just it's remarkable. Is it easier to hit home runs when nobody's on base? Just not a lot of base runners to go around yesterday. No, there weren't. Especially when Bergner was striking out 11 without a walk through eight innings. Baum's been effective, but a little bit all over the place in this inning. Well, he walks a lot. I mean, he averages about a, a walk every other inning. So. Oh. And he hits Wilson. Wilson might have said something to Tyler Baum when he first came out of the box. Uh, home plate umpire Kevin Sweeney kind of ran down to first base along with Wilson. Uh, maybe not. No, he didn't say Wilson anything. Wilson didn't say anything. I think just from what we saw in the top of the first, yeah, I, mean, I think that's Kevin Sweeney being proactive. Yeah, probably anything. a good idea. I mean, it didn't, didn't make a direct hit on Wilson. Let's see if uh, the Wolfpack can take advantage of a two-out mistake. Change up, left outside from Baum. Evans was good last night, too. He had the, uh, the two-run hard single, and then he had the second of the three, three consecutive home runs in the ninth inning. Edwards with a high fly ball. It's foul. And that disappeared deep <laughs> into the trees down there in right. Way out in front. Just a loud strike. Yep. We saw his power last night in that ninth inning. Yeah, it was the uh, second time of the game we had home runs on consecutive swings. Wilson and Evans. Big shift for North Carolina in the infield. And that hits Edwards. Brian Brown hit three batters yesterday. Tyler Baum has hit two batters in the first inning today. And this is what I was saying when he was all over the place. That's, what, the second or third pitch we've seen him spike yeah. you know, three feet out in front of the plate. This is resembling Yankees Red Sox already. We had an overreaction. <laughs> whole, whole bunch of batters getting hit. And this is trouble with yeah. uh, with Patrick no, Bailey up. The, the difference is there's no intention here from Baum. No, I agree. 
I agree. Well, I mean, in, in many cases, there's not intent. In, in most cases, there's not intent in hit bats. Hit batters. In Yankees, Red Sox? Yeah, even, even them. We had a, an early visit from uh, Robert Woodard, the pitching coach. Baum got off to a good start. He struck out McLean. He got McKin uh, Kinnaman to pop out weekly on just one pitch. Yep. Looked like he might have a quick inning. And you know, Bergner with his 11 strikeouts yesterday, I, I was talking with you and I said, you know, maybe the most impressive thing about that is he didn't walk anybody, right? There weren't a lot of free base runners yesterday. No, not at back all. And, and Baum, there haven't been any hits in this inning. Uh, hits back-to-back -back batters. The, uh, the crowd getting on home plate umpire Kevin Sweeney for allowing uh, a, a longer than normal meeting on the mound. I mean, they're not warming anybody up. They North are, Carolina. actually. They are? Caden O'Brien on your screen right now. Okay. Maybe they're, wow, that would be a very quick hook. He appeared in the uh, in the Friday game. He was good. Baum sends Roberts scurrying to his left. Patrick Bailey at the plate has homered in all three games NC State has had against North Carolina this season. They had the home run early in Durham to put, uh, put the Wolf Pack up, I believe, 2-0. I was leaving the stadium at that point, heading home. Well, the way O'Brien is throwing in the bullpen, he may be coming in uh, regardless of what happens in the second inning. Good pitch, Bailey, way out in front. It's a nice wrinkle from uh, Tyler Baum. He had a great, a great freshman year last year. He's ten and one in his college career. An ERA sub three. Was a true freshman. Too good for the midweek. Yeah. And he throws that same breaking ball to Bailey and strikes him out. So after the mound visit, he settles in and got Bailey to chase. Two strikeouts in the first for Tyler Baum as he protects that 2 nothing lead. Here's the defense for NC State. Again, JT Jarrett starting at second, as Adam and I were discussing in the first inning. The main change is Jack Conley behind home plate, just giving Patrick Bailey a day of rest. Yeah, he kind of kind of needs it. Looked like he was struggling a little bit to handle Brown and company last night. Uh, Conley's had the same problem with Piedmont early. Uh, they, they need a uh, little bit more take charge out of Brock Dethridge in the right field. We saw that happen yesterday, too, on a ball that was uh, ultimately handled comfortably by Jarrett, but probably an easier play for the right fielder coming in. McGee, Gahagan, and Tesser do up in the second for the Tar Heels as they sent seven men to the plate in the first inning. By the way, impressed that uh, North Carolina in their Kansas City Royals-esque uniforms all wearing stirrups. You know me? Yeah. I'm a stirrups guy. Those are the uh, Royals uniforms from the infamous Pine Tar game. That's right. George Brett. And we shockingly still use Pine Tar. We haven't figured out something else, right? McGee able to check up. So far in this series, McGee is just one for eight, but the one was that big hit that he had on Friday to give the Heels a 3-2 lead. Back in the fourth inning when uh, North Carolina scored six of their runs in two three-run innings. Piedmont trying to pitch inside to the lefty. Fifth multiple run inning already for North Carolina in the series. And 
There's a strikeout as the foul tip is gloved by Jack Conley in the first strikeout of the ball game for Johnny Piedmont. That was a great pitch from Piedmont. A little off speed away, and McGee out in front. Looked like a little uh, fastball, maybe a changeup that tailed away. But it definitely had the outer edge. Good pitch. The nine-hole hitter, Zach Gehagen. Two for eight in the series. Made that great play defensively to end the ball game. Clinched the series for Carolina here in Raleigh for the first time since 2007. Got just enough on the throw, but he got rid of it quickly. So important to, to release, to get the ball out of your hand quickly when you're trying to make a play like that. You don't need to take, uh, take two steps and then do a crow hop. Two O's popped up. Conley throws the mask down, fighting the sun. Staring right up into it. That's a good play. And an adventurous second out, but he made the catch. He's had a rough day already. Just in the we're just in the second inning. Home plate collision. And a wild pitch slash pass ball, and then that one looking straight up into the sun. Catching is not easy. That's why they uh, they call them the tools of ignorance, I guess. I caught. I was I was a catcher for a while. I, was, I, I look like a catcher, don't I? That's, I mean, that's that's fair. not a. Uh, it's fair. Actually, not a position don't. that I wanted to play. Oh, I loved it. It's great. You can you're you're involved in every play. Strike two from Piedmont. Yeah, if we're being honest, a couple of times I purposely forgot to bring my cup. Oh, did you? So that I didn't have to catch. No, nah, it was the most fun position. Piedmont has gotten ahead for the most part. Now, when he can get ahead and dictate at, dictate at bats, he can be effective. Really struggled in the first inning, trying to finish off the second in a little overthrow here to Tesser, who doubled on the first pitch of the game. Mm -hmm. Well, first, uh, first two guys at the ball hard. Let's think of where, uh, where that inning could have gone had North Carolina not made a base running mistake. Routine fly ball into center field. And that does end the inning. So Piedmont has a 1-2-3 inning, tries to get some momentum going, but it's Carolina. 2-0 advantage in the series, 2-0 advantage in this one. Back in the bottom of the second inning, here's a look at the defense behind Tyler Baum. Cody Roberts back behind home plate as Tesser moves back to right and McGee in the field again in left. Strong arm for Cody Roberts. He's their regular catcher. Though I think uh, North Carolina's catching situation is pretty good. Yeah, we haven't seen Brendan Ilias in this series. I like what I and saw from uh, Martirona yesterday. And so really they have three guys that they trust behind the plate. Dethridge has had a rough series so far for NC State. One for eight, five strikeouts. Yeah, she obviously has struggled. He struck out to end the game Friday night. And uh, I think the more, uh, the more surprising issues have been his inability to take charge out in the outfield. Sometimes you carry, you carry struggles from one place to the other in baseball. Somebody with his level of experience needs to learn how to forget quickly. We showed you the numbers just a moment ago. He's having a great senior year. Oh yeah. There's no, there's no denying his talent. He's going to get drafted. He's run, he runs too well. There's too much potential there.
It's a fly ball into left field. This will back up all the way back. His eighth home run of the season. Wind's blowing out to left today, Adam. Oh, yeah. We talked about it yesterday. The wind is blowing severely out to left field. We talked about it yesterday, uh, about pitches away, that when Deathridge learns how to use the other side of the field, he's going to be even more dangerous. And he uh, kept his front shoulder in and uh, drove it the other way. High fly ball, but got up in the jet stream and went out. Here's the look at the swing that led to an oppo shot. A little wind dated, North Carolina State is on the board. Another solo shot. <laughs> last eight home runs in a row. Eight. And there was one home run on Friday. Bailey hit a solo shot, so all nine home runs in the series. Base is empty, right? Now Baum falls behind Jarrett, two and zero. Jarrett moving up to the seven spot today with Conley in the lineup. He's on deck. And Dylan Cooper stays in the nine hole. That's got to feel good for Brock Dethridge. Oh, yeah. As I said, struggling with the five strikeouts in this series. First at bat on Sunday, trying to give your team a spark, and he goes yard. About 2,900 umpires in the lineup, and the third hit batsman for North Carolina today already. 2-2 Two -two breaking ball. Looked like it slipped out of his hand. Yeah. All right, so Jack Conley. As you mentioned, he's already had an eventful day. Tough day at the plate. Mike Fox out to the pitching mound. Change. Yep. Yeah. Caden O'Brien, I guess, he was warming up before. So Carolina is going to look to use eight innings of bullpen today. Okay. Uh, O'Brien is good, though. Left-hander. I thought the way he was throwing, even if he didn't come in in that inning, it looked like he was throwing to come in right away. I, I, I guess Mike Fox decided, let's see if I can get another inning out of, out of bomb. And then uh, after the death rich home run, and then the hit batsman, he decided, you know what? Probably not. This is gonna. This could be a long day. We could have uh, Johnny Holstaff for both teams. So Baum exits, O'Brien enters. We'll tell you more about the freshman when we come back. Two to one, North Carolina leads. Nobody out here in the bottom of the second. Mike Fox and the Tar Heels. Winning their first series in Raleigh since 2007. Have never swept NC State <laughs> here in Raleigh. Trying to get that done today. And if they do, it's going to be, you know, they've relied on the bullpen a lot all season long. Yeah, it's going like to have to be the bullpen. Just like NC State. And uh, Caden O'Brien, who is a very, very good pitcher. Left-hander. I mean, I like to see. We have, you've got uh, freshmen contributing for both sides. But O'Brien has been really good. 29 innings, just 16 hits allowed. He struck out 34. He's walked a bunch. So... Uh, he also has rarely goes all that long. Like his last eight or nine appearances have been uh, an inning or an inning and a third, inning and two thirds. So I would imagine that we're going to see uh, maybe two, maybe three innings out of Caden O'Brien uh, if he's effective. He was effective on Friday night. As you get a look at the numbers on Conley this season, yes, a 417 batting average, but as we've touched on prior, he hasn't played a whole lot this year, so he entered today uh, with two starts under his belt and five for 12 Yeah. at the plate. It's, uh, 
It's easy to have a, a really high average with just a handful of at-bats. Big swing and a miss, strike two. Played his high school ball with the young man on deck, Dylan Cooper. Did he? At Leesville Road in Raleigh. Good off-speed pitch by O'Brien there. Had Conley way out in front. And just missed the outside part of the plate. So. Once he say, saw him on Friday and he walked two, he struck out four. So 3-2 count seems about right for his first bat. <laughs> and he walks Conley. Well, Wolfpack have uh, taken advantage a little bit here of some wildness and have created a little bit of a rally here. Those are two very, very tough pitches to take with two strikes. They were both very close. So you see Roberts come out from behind home plate, relay the signals, how Carolina is going to play this defensively because they expect a bunt. I would expect a bunt from Dylan Cooper. But when you got a pitcher who is struggling to throw strikes, I'd kind of let him see if he can get himself really wild and into trouble. Elliot Avon's going to call time here. I don't like giving uh, giving away. I Personally, I don't like giving away outs. Certainly not early in a game, in a game that is probably going to be high scoring. But when, you've, uh, when you have a pitcher come in the game and he's struggled to throw strikes, I just as soon take at least until he throws one. We'll see if the bunt's on here again for NC State. I don't know why it wouldn't be. If you bunted on the first pitch, unless you wanted to put a play on, like a hit and run or something like that, and I don't see that happening. Maybe O'Brien thinking about that because yeah. Datris is playing in front of third base. Now, he's not far enough away, but it's oh, no. just a little bit different as the third baseman coming in to receive a throw, obviously, yeah. than backing up and finding the base. Runners not moving. Cooper gets the bunt down. Boy, I didn't think that was going to be good enough. No, and Roberts almost went to second. Good enough base running by NC State to get a good jump because it was not a great bunt. It was just maybe four or five feet out in front of home plate. This Four or five feet is generous. All right, so the Wolfpack have now two runners in scoring position for the top of the order. One out, Josh McLean takes a change up away. 0 for 1 so far today, but you see the 357 batting average. He's got a couple of hits in this series, and then the game they played at the D bath, he had four hits. He's just such a good player. So six and three games, not bad. Carolina's outfield playing uh, pretty deep in center with Riley and McGee in left. Tesser is slightly shaded towards the line. Seems to be a little bit of room in right center field. Bloop to second. And it doesn't hardly get out of the infield. Big second out for O'Brien and the heels. Because if you're a senior like Josh McLean, runner on third, one out, thinking you have to somehow get that run across. He does not get the RBI. Yeah, something, uh, something in the outfield or something on the ground. That was, that was exactly what NC State did not need. And now you'll leave it up to Kinnaman, who really is their best prospect, their best hitter, but he has struggled in the series. You a little chilly, huh? Windows open. Oh, it's cold. Chilly. Andrew, jacket going back on. Andrew putting the jacket on. See, yesterday I was cold in here because the air conditioning was blowing like crazy. We spoke of Kenneman's struggles in this series. 
And he finds himself in an 0-2 hole. So O'Brien coming out of the pin, walked Conley. But it's just one pitch of getting out of this thing. A yeah, curveball away here from O'Brien. Just missed it. You called it. And throw it again. Now, the last thing, if you're North Carolina, the last thing you want to do is allow Will Wilson to come to the plate. Sure. <laughs> O'Brien got five outs on Friday, but did not face Kinnaman. Rolled over to the right side. Shouldn't be any trouble for Bush. And he beats Kinnaman to the bag, and the inning is over. So it starts with a home run from Brock Dethridge. His eighth of the season, NC State chases Baum off the mound, threatens for more. And our score is two to one through two. Another sold out crowd here at Doak Field. With Adam Gold, I'm Andrew Sanders. Three hits in this one, but we've seen a ton of base runners. Yeah, a lot of walks, three hit batsmen already. And Johnny Piedmont, uh, second inning was really, really good. As long as he can get ahead early in the count, Piedmont can, uh, can stick around here four or five innings. Maybe give NC State a real good chance to win this ball game. A game, you know, you, you don't want to talk about must wins uh, when you've had a kind of year that NC State has had. Uh, they have now lost three in a row. First time they had lost consecutive games all year was Friday. Um, so it's not, I, don't, I wouldn't even call this a must win for NC State. Uh, but I think it's an important game for Johnny Piedmont. A good curveball that just missed. Kind of just bent around the outside part of the plate. We'll see which Johnny Piedmont we get. The first inning Johnny Piedmont or the second inning Johnny Piedmont here in the third. He's got to go through Bush, Datris, and Riley. All three reached against him in the first. Bush and Datris came around to score. Bush was involved in the, uh, the play at the plate back in the first inning where he collided with Jack Conley in which both benches emptied for basically just a baseball play that was not malicious. And nobody, and nothing was said to anybody. It's the fourth hit batsman. That one caught Michael Bush, looked like on the, on the foot. We have three hits and four hit batsmen today. It's been a weird game, no doubt. Here's a slider to the back foot, yep. That does not feel good if you've ever been hit in the cleat. I played baseball for, I don't know, 12 years, from like age five to age 17. Never got hit by a pitch. I was never hit by a pitch. Hmm. I have cat-like reflex. I question that you're telling the truth right no, now because never, that seems impossible. Never been hit by a pitch. Datris sneaks in a bunt, barehanded attempt from Cooper. And they say they got him at first, and I think this might be one that Carolina wants to look at. I'm not sure and, and that. Datris is certainly asking for it. I'm not sure that Evans was back down on the bag. Good play by Dylan Cooper to throw on the bare hand and throw it on the run. No, he, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure that uh, Datris didn't beat it to begin with. Just in real time, I thought that I thought that he was safe. It is a great play from Dylan Cooper. Oh, don't tremendous. get me wrong, uh, but Carolina, I think, does want them to look at it, and they will. So let's see 
Again, the looks that you see here on the ACC Network Extra are the same looks that the umpiring crew will get. First base umpire Frank Sylvester calling Datris out. And we haven't seen this angle yet. I think he's off the bag. That's I think, really close. I think they're Can we gonna, see that angle again even slower? Yeah, I think they're going to read. I think they're going to uh, overturn this. I but mean, you're going to have to go frame by frame on this. But for the record, there can't be anything worse his in foot, baseball. His foot is on the bag. Run it back two, two or three frames from here. No, he definitely didn't beat it. Yeah. I think the, the might, ball is in the glove. A, the ball is in the glove uh, a frame earlier. They're keeping the call. So the call on the field stands. Good for them. But I will say for the record, nothing in baseball is worse than replay. Nothing. I disagree. Unless we have an, unless there's an obvious miss. If it's not an obvious miss, why are we bothering? To get the call right. They got the call right. We didn't need the replay to get the call right. One. He got the call right on the field. Ah, you saw how close it was. Oh, it though. was very close. It was close but enough that. My feeling is, is if, if it's not egregious, play on. Play on. We, we everything in baseball is compl We complain about the pace of play, so we create mechanisms to slow the pace of play down. Doesn't make sense. If we have an obvious mistake, like what happened when. Uh, that kid Galarraga had the perfect game and Jim Joyce at first base in sure. the game at Detroit just completely kicked the call. I mean, yeah. it was clearly out, and he called him safe. Yeah. Replay can help that, but we don't need replay for that. And we don't need replay to see if a guy's foot comes off the base on a sliding play at second base. Okay, so who, Deal determine, with home runs. So who determines whether it's egregious or not? Was, did that look like an egregious... Either way, did that right. did no, that, no, but so we don't need to replay that. But at some point, right? Don't need it. There is a there is a line of what was egregious or not, right? Well, yes, I think we all understand when something. Goes, oh my gosh, how did they get that wrong? And in those cases, replay is quick. I will give uh, give them credit for that not being a lengthy replay. That was pretty quick. See, to me, it's just more important that they get the call right. And I hear, I hear what that you're saying. That actually is not a concern of mine. <laughs> I'm serious. It's not a concern of mine. I hear what mine. you're saying, but we have honestly. We bad calls all the time. Honestly, look, we know that baseball is not an hour-and-a-half sport. If you're a baseball right. fan, you're probably not concerned with the difference between, say, a three-hour game and a three-hour and 15-minute game. Correct. And by the way, both teams get two challenges. You right. saw how quickly that was done. That was good. So that was we very could good. use four challenges in the game, and it wouldn't be 15 minutes. Right, so but, to that's, me, but that's about pace. That's not about length of game. That's about pace of game. We had a call overturned on Friday. We did. And it was, oh, Riley was ready to throw the bat. Yes, he was. Instead, he's called back. But that was an egregious miss. The tag was pretty obvious however okay. it wasn't obvious to the first base umpire right so you know you know one thing that the replay has brought fewer head coach ejections oh i love a good head coach ejection no i mean from an entertainment <laughs> standpoint from an entertainment Come standpoint on, it's great right i grew up with earl weaver and billy martin and lou Pinella. those were great ralph hauck riley spoils the payoff pitch yeah of course we have the uh the all-time leader in managerial ejections. Bobby Cox? I told you, I watched Paul the Frames Famer. a lot growing yeah. up. I have seen Bobby Cox get ejected oh. a number of times. But you just think about that on Friday, right? Right. An egregious miss. And if they hadn't had a replay, no doubt, I'm not saying he would have gotten ejected, but no doubt Coach Fox would have gone out there and argued and been pretty upset, understandably, about it, right? It's, it's better to have replay. Or we could have more common sense, and if, you, if you're not going to go out and, and get a call changed then, you know, make your point and you go back to the dugout. I just don't think we need replay so to, you bring up to that slow point. the game. That's another reason why I like replay. Because in the past, we would have a manager argue, or head coach argue, and, and you knew that the call wasn't right. going to change, right? So when you talk about wasting time, right, head coaches would waste just as much time as we spend because now it's a quick conversation. Hey, what do you think? Yeah, I disagree. Go look at it. Okay. You know what I mean? That's, that's the extent of the conversation. It's not nearly as entertaining, though. 
three to one on the ground out. So not an entirely unproductive out for Riley as he does. Hey, they were still playing baseball while we were having this conversation. Good for them. We were slowing the pace of game. And that's the other part about it. Managerial challenges, coaches' challenges in football. Stop making it strategy. If you're going to have it, somebody is in charge. Hey, you guys got that one wrong. Psst. Home plate up. Move guys back. We, we, don't need, we don't need to make it strategic. It's just the first year. I'm sure it'll improve. Freeman off the end of the bat, serves it in the left center field, and North Carolina scores again. It's Ike Freeman. We told you he's been on a tear in ACC yeah. play. He delivers again. It's a bunch of RBIs in this series. Look, North Carolina top to bottom has a really good lineup. They really do. They got off to a slow start this year with 7-7 seven and seven through 14 games and have been absolutely blistering since. They see Scott Foxhall coming out to talk to Johnny Piedmont as NC State's got some action in the bullpen. Their bullpen's gotten a lot of work this year. So we've seen more uh, first inning Johnny Piedmont than second inning Johnny Piedmont. Kent Kleiman, the left-hander who pitched on Friday, warming up in the bullpen. Pitched a lot on Friday. And Kleiman, who has been very effective all year long, has actually started to kind of labor the last few weeks. He has allowed runs in seven of his last nine appearances. And I do think they're probably going to ask for a little bit of length from Kleiman if they have to, uh, and they are going to make a change. So Piedmont gets eight outs in total. Both teams are into the bullpen early here. And it'll be Kent Kleiman coming in. Said he pitched a lot on Friday. Well, to be exact, he threw 46 pitches. Only two and a third, but he came in the game to get uh, Reed Johnston out of a jam in the fifth and was still on the mound in the eighth when North Carolina went uh, kind of walk, single walk, uh, and he was in there to give up the hit to McGee. So we've got to take a break. North Carolina already won a cross in this inning thanks to Ike Freeman and NC State making a call to the bullpen. Three hits for North Carolina. They pushed across three runs already and looking for more with the designated hitter, Clemente Inklin, due up. Left on left here against Kent Kleinman. See, that ERA has actually gone up a bunch over his last few appearances. And North Carolina got to him on Friday night. Uh, they did. I said earlier that Ashton McGee had the, uh, the hit off of Kleinman in the eighth inning Friday night. It was Ike Freeman. All these multiple run innings run together for me. <laughs> I apologize. By the way, on, uh, on Twitter, you can reach me at a gold fan. There are people that don't like my dislike of replay, but you'll get over it. I'm positive about it. Yeah, I didn't like your dislike of fine. replay. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to stick up for those people. Um, maybe I'm an old man. I don't know. I enjoy watching instant replays. Kleiman eats up the outside corner for strike two. Two out of the next three hitters for North Carolina hit from the left side. So with a, a couple of bases open, good idea to go to Kleiman here. And you see how important the game is to Elliott Avent. And he strikes out Inkland. Three pitches, and the inning is over. Kleiman retired seven in a row on Friday night right out of the pin. He gets the job done. But speaking of getting the job done, Ike Freeman in this series, the shortstop, gives Carolina a two-run lead. NC 
State Baseball on the ACC Network. Extra Wednesday at 6 o'clock as the Wolfpack hosts the Campbell Camels. If you don't miss it, use your Watch ESPN app. The wind is blowing out today in Raleigh. We've already seen one home run off the bat of Brock Dethridge. Will Wilson had two yesterday. You know, both of these teams have been getting the job done with home runs. Carolina had six last weekend against Georgia Tech. Big reason why they were able to sweep the Yellow Jackets. And then here in this series, we saw it last night with the three dingers. This is sharply hit into right center field. Will Wilson's going to take a wide turn of first. And he's got himself a leadoff single. Ladies and gentlemen, Will Wilson is up. That means a ball will be hit hard. Oh for 5 Friday since then. He's been on fire. Hey, here's an interesting uh, thing. North Carolina was playing a shift where second baseman Zach Gahagan was uh, actually an up, up sir. Yeah, I think second baseman yeah, Zach Gahagan was playing up toward the middle. Yeah. And that ball was not, I mean, it, it was, I mean, it might have been a base hit if he was playing a normal second base position, uh, but that ball was just about 15, 20 feet right of the second base bag. And the second baseman couldn't get over to get it. And he hit a ball the other way last night for the uh, for the double. Yeah, Carolina playing him to pull. Now you see where Gahagan is playing. Well, I guess that doesn't give you really a, a point of reference, but they're playing Edwards to pull as well. We're going to be uh, shifting the opposite way. Yes. Well, I'm not anti-shift. The shift is fine. There you go. That's a much better look at it there where you can see Gahagan. I don't understand the, f the there's a movement to – to limit the shift, and they're actually, people have talked about creating quadrants on a baseball field. He just missed that one. Riley makes the catch in center. It was a mile high in the air. Like, I don't understand why anybody would be upset about, like, scouting. All right, here's where this player hits the ball most of the time. Yeah. So we don't want you to set your defense accordingly. I don't think that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't think quadrants doesn't make no, sense. No, they're actually, the, people have suggested that who don't yeah. like the shift. Like, you know, and now you see in, in Major League Baseball this year, you've seen a lot of bunts uh, to combat the shift. That's, that's, that's a good way to do it. Yeah, exactly. There, There's a way to beat the shift, but put it quiet. That's that's dumb. I hadn't heard that. Oh, yeah. That's one of the worst things I've heard. It's crazy. Just set your defense as long as you're in the field of play. Are we going to put quadrants on the basketball court? Are we going to tell football teams that they can only have X number of players within the hash marks you're or without? You're only allowed to have one player on the line of scrimmage now. Look, there's the field. Yeah. Put your defenders out there wherever you want, as however you best see fit to place them. If you want to play, I was doing a softball game recently. Right. There was a slap. I, I know it's a little bit different, no, but no, there was a slap, slap hitter, and the opposing coach brought the right fielder into the infield. They played five infielders. Okay. And said, I dare you to pull the ball, essentially. And uh, they got three ground ball outs, nine to three. I there kid you, you not. This was three or four weeks ago I saw this. So if you want to play, however you want to play the defense, that's, that's fine. That's fine. I got no problem with it. You, you load up in one area, you, you're leaving another area exposed. Caden O'Brien has swing and miss stuff, and you see it there. Bailey struck out on off-speed pitches when he faced Baum earlier in the game. And O'Brien struck him out on Friday. And he gets him again. That was a fast, tailing fastball away, it looked like. We kind of feast or famine for Bailey. Home runs in, uh, in all three games against North Carolina this year prior to today. And you see on that swing, O'Brien got him to swing at his pitch. Yeah, absolutely. That's what happens when you get ahead in the count. All right, Deathridge homered his last trip.
shift on for North Carolina again. Big hole between third and shortstop, though. Deathridge's home run went the other way. Riley in center is actually playing slightly to the uh, to the left side of dead center field. So they play him, hits the ball slightly the opposite way. Oh, that was a bullet. Down into right field, Deathridge with extra bases. Wilson has to stop at third. And Deathridge with a little Fortnite dance celebration. <laughs> See if we can get a replay of that. Very nice. But he's got two extra base hits today. I think Michael Bush thinks he should have had that one at first base, and he might be right. But that was that was just scalded right past it. Deathridge can absolutely fly. That's that's great. I love that at second base after. <laughs> Does your son play Fortnite? Uh, my son is nine. I'm not letting him play Fortnite okay. just yet. It is uh, very popular. Oh yeah. With I'm sure both of these teams. Oh yeah. They uh, some of these guys might play uh, like with each other online. Big spot for Jared here. NC State got the leadoff single from Will Wilson. Looked like they were in danger of spoiling that leadoff single after a fly out and a strikeout. But after the death ridge double here, the inning looks a little bit different. Needing that timely hit though. And as it usually comes down to in baseball, the team that wins is usually the team that came up with timely hits, and that has been the case in this one so far. Yeah, like, uh, like just about every sport, there's just moments within a game. Line drive caught by Datris. He kind of lined that one up the whole way, but the uh, ball was hit pretty hard. Datris had it, though. Datris saves a couple of runs for the heels. And they're still in front by two. Twelfth-ranked North Carolina. Up two games, up two runs in the series. We're in the top of the fourth with Adam Gold. I'm Andrew Sanders. That won't be 12th-ranked for uh, very much longer if no. they win this game today. Whatever, regardless of what happens today, Winning the series on the road. Oh, yeah. Against a top five team is definitely going to get. Now, the heels are in the top 10 in most every poll. Sure. But in the coaches poll, which is the one we use, okay. they're number 12. But yeah, it should be, you would think, consensus top 10. Oh, I don't after think there's any question. Uh, you're, I mean, you're looking at two teams uh, that are vying for national seeds as well when we get to the NCAA tournament. Yep. And I will tell you that uh, getting the number one seed in Durham for the ACC tournament, if you're the number one regular season team in the ACC, you have a very strong argument to be a national seed. No question. Oh, you're pretty much almost guaranteed a I, I would. Th I would think that uh, the number one seed in Durham will probably be uh, easily a national seed. And then you throw, depending on who would come out of Durham with the title, that team, if it's certainly if it's one of these two teams, would uh, clearly be a national seed. Heck, uh, the way Duke has played all year, if Duke were to win the tournament in Durham, they could end up being a national seed. Of course, we don't know where they play. They put in a bid to host at the DBAP, or pardon me, at Coombs. No, at Coombs. At Coombs. I, I mean, to me, that's a, uh, that's a tough sell for the NCAA to do a, uh, the NCAA tournament at Coombs. I mean, I could. I mean, I know they don't like to do it. I don't, they don't like to send a one seat on the road. They've done it before. I could see him send uh, sending a if Duke isn't a national seed, sending them possibly to Greenville as a number one. Dylan Inweiler. We've seen him pinch run a couple of times in this series. 
But East Carolina could be a number one seed too. Duke has talked about bringing in extra seating and they have bathrooms that they need to uh, bring in as well. So it's, uh, it's just not really set up for something like that. I mean, NC State is fortunate. Uh, it's such, this is such a beautiful ballpark. North Carolina uh, has a great facility at Boshamer Stadium. I really thought uh, that Duke would try to get into USA Baseball's complex in Cary or in Apex. What is that considered, carry or apex? You would know that. Anyway. Carry. Is carry? Yep. Yeah, um, I would argue. Saw the numbers on Enweiler. This is Ashton McGee's spot. And so his day is done. He 0 for 1 with a strikeout for McGee. And Enweiler pulls the bat back but takes strike two. That I don't get. You're giving it up. You're giving up. You're giving yourself up. And that was clearly a strike. And it was down in the uh, down in the zone, too. It's a little easier to bunt. Maybe he never wanted to bunt. Maybe his heart wasn't in it. It's a man after my own heart. <laughs> Good breaking ball from Kleiman. Strikes out in Weiler. He's got a fantastic pitch. Good sharp breaking ball, started outside. Broke over the outside corner. Number 10, Zach Gahagan. Gahagan 0 for 1, he popped up in foul territory to the catcher, Jack Conley. They just missed off the inside part. State doesn't shift nearly as much as North Carolina does. North Carolina uses it a lot. Doesn't look like NC State does it as much. Yeah, North Carolina, I think, one of the first teams to really get into it heavily, yeah. and more teams are starting to follow. I mean, it was a trend. It's been a trend in Major League Baseball, too. Now everybody does it. Yeah, and a lot of that speaks to the technology. Sure. Because in the major leagues, you know you can get the most advanced scouting reports. As Gahagan hits a can of corn into right fields, two away. But now at the college level, and partially because of the ACC Network Extra, you can always sure. order number seven. You didn't see realize pretty much any game. You didn't realize how you would be able to help coaches across the ACC. Oh, I'm... I'm Surely not helping in no, any way. you are. I'm sure they, they break down footage with the mute button on. What did Andrew Sanders have to say about it? Okay, we'll go with that. Tesser to the plate, who is a junior college teammate of Dylan Inweiler last year out in Arizona, Yavapai College. It's an another good curveball from Kleiman. Swing and a miss, strike two. Looks like he turned that one over a little bit. Stayed down, maybe tailed away. See, sometimes you get a re reliever that really thrives on extra work, and sometimes when they're just a little bit tired, you get more movement. Tesser steps out. You see him wearing that number seven. That was... Logan Warmoth's number last year. And since he's been inserted in the lineup, he's got him in playing like Warmoth. Going to test Conley's arm, and the bag is swiped by Roberts. He is a good catcher. I mean, we saw him play right field. We've, mm. we've raved about the arm all weekend, and he can go out and do that for you as well. Yeah, he got a uh, great jump off of Kleiman. Kleiman, who, uh, who holds the ball a long time, didn't do a really good job uh, of holding Roberts on. And, and it's kind of slow, kind of unwinds a really tall frame. It just kind of slow going to the plate. He got it inside and jammed him. 
Slow roller to Jarrett. No trouble with it. And so, North Carolina got a lead off single. Couldn't turn that in uh, to another run. Kent Kleinman puts up a zero, and our score remains 3-1. 3-1 North Carolina, our score here in Raleigh. Scores around the ACC. Clemson looking for a sweep, as are the Seminoles, both of them in good position. Wake Forest looking for some revenge against Georgia Tech. And Duke and Virginia Tech in the rubber match, as are the Eagles and the Irish. Pitt and Louisville playing out of conference this weekend. Miami has scored now two runs in the series against Florida State. Hey, another reason it's a big game for the Wolfpack, Florida State's now on NC State's heels. The last thing you want to do is uh, end up, you don't want to be four, five, and nine on that side, not to mention you're on uh, North Carolina's side of the bracket uh, right now if the Tar Heels go on to be the top seed. Uh, NC State, you don't want to fall below the three. But NC State and North Car or, pardon me, and Florida State will play what could be a pivotal series the last weekend of the season. Absolutely. Down in Tallahassee, which, you know, Florida State has had its struggles this year, no doubt. But they seem to be putting it together at the right time. I believe they've won seven straight games. Yeah, Florida State's pitching the last few years has not been all that impressive, but they have a lineup that just goes on for days. Uh, but they have pitched very well in the series against the Hurricanes. That's for sure. I'm impressed with the way that O'Brien mixes speeds. He's got a good fastball with late life. Breaking stuff looks pretty good. I like the deception yeah. in his delivery. But he walks Conley. Lead off walk for the Wolfpack here in the fourth. NC State has gotten the leadoff man on in each of the last three innings. Of course, Dethridge's home run, you immediately score that one. That, yes. that counts as getting the leadoff man on and in. Uh, leadoff single in the third. Couldn't do anything with it. Dylan Cooper has already been asked to bunt once today. Make it twice. You like that, Roberts? On the run, not throwing to the bag, throwing <laughs> to a spot, and he hit his spot. Maybe he's a quarterback. I wouldn't be surprised. Catchers can do everything. Look, he's rolling out right. Oh, that's a strike. Great throw. Strong throw. You know, we were talking about Zach Gahagan's play behind, you know, deep behind the bag last night to end the game. Uh, and how quick the release was. Cause sometimes that's more important than how much you get on the throw. I would say the same thing for a catcher. How quick do you deliver the ball? Pop time. Yeah. How quick do you get rid of the ball? Push bunt, and he pushed it hard. Almost hard enough to beat two. I'm not really sure what he was doing there other than maybe simply trying to bunt the ball hard uh, in the hole because Gahagan was so close to second base. Either that or maybe trying to get it past Bush if he thought Bush was going to crash a little harder. Uh, but it turned out to almost be a double play ball. I mean, that's just a bizarre thing. You, you know me. We've worked together enough. You know my feeling for the sacrifice bunt. It's a little bit like root canal. McLean with the fly ball, just foul. If you're going to do it, let's get it done. Let's do it. Don't try to do too much with that. So now all you did there really was waste the at-bat. I'm lucky enough in my life I haven't had a root canal. Oh, I have. They're much better now. I recommend them highly now. McLean falls behind 0-2. Has anybody ever said that? You recommend a root canal? I would actually I don't really recommend it. I guess you just did. Yeah. They're much uh, they're much quicker and less painful than they used to be. This sends Gahagan back at second, and once again they will get the force out. 
That smart play by Gahagan. There's just no need to try to do too much. You're not going to get McLean, even if Gahagan could charge that ball and make the play on the bag, which I guess he could have done if he really wanted to force the issue. Stay back, play the bigger hop, and get the shore out. Now see if Brett Kinneman can uh, get a big two-out hit for the Wolfpack. Would be surprised to see McLean on the move here. One for ten in the series. Worst comes to worst, you have Kinneman leading off the next inning. See his average has dropped down to 291. And it hasn't been down there basically since opening day when he went 0 for 8 in a doubleheader on opening day. NC State was hitting over 300 as a team almost all year, and now they're as a team under 300. But then after that opening day, Kenneman was named the College Baseball Player of the Month yep. for February. So literally there was no one better in the country uh, in February. Continued that into much of March. I think he's a Golden Spikes Award semifinalist, isn't he? Yeah, mid-season award nominee. Yeah. Kinneman, Brian Brown, Michael Bush, all uh, on the Golden Spikes watch list. Looked like he got a fast the hit there. He did. Baseball's a funny game. I mean, when you were in the zone like he was earlier this year, any fastball he gets seemed like he was driving. Right. At this point, he takes strike three. Caden O'Brien has been awfully good out of the bullpen, replacing Tyler Baum in the first inning, and he finishes the fourth. Leadoff walk does no damage. 2 a.m. Well, we, we don't have the play-in games anymore. So we'll have uh, four pods of three teams each. There will be three games Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, we'll have two semifinals. Sunday, we'll have the championship game. Should be a, an absolute great time, not to mention the fact that there's so much around the ballpark. Now. Yep. Uh, there are restaurants. They're going to have Fan Fest there. Uh, the American Tobacco Campus is beautiful. Uh, full disclosure, company that uh, does pay me owns the American Tobacco uh, Campus. So uh, I might sound like a company man, but it is, uh, it is really a cool spot. Three and one the count here on Bush. Michael Bush. Got it into a fielder's choice in the first, then scored. Was hit by a pitch in the third. And he got a fastball to hit and couldn't do anything with it. Clemens into his now uh, third inning work has looked very, very sharp. This is the Ken Clemens that we saw for really the most part of the first month and a half, two months of the season. Breaking balls hit to Jared at second. It's the first time they've been able to sit down Michael Bush. You know, for we've had two pitching changes in now four and a, and a sixth. In a four and a six. I was going to say four and a third. Technically not correct. We have two pitching changes for both teams. We've had four hit bats, but we've had a bunch of walks, a lot of base runners. You know what they call but that. But just three one. They call it Sunday baseball. They, they, okay, yes, they do. That was a good pitch in on the hands of Datris. Datris, just a tremendous athlete. You know he was all state in football and basketball in high school. And it goes without saying, obviously baseball as well. Yeah. I did, not, I did not know he was a three-sport star. Yeah. Well, they just had a uh, – they, I, so they flashed a stat during the NFL draft that almost all of the players who were drafted, who were 
basically in uh, the top 50 uh, in terms of any consensus in a pre-draft ranking. They were almost all two or three sport athletes in high school. Hit hard, but on one hop into Cooper's glove, and he airmails it. And he overthrew first base by so much that Datris couldn't take second because the carom came back into right field. Yeah, it, it uh, you know if it took a weirder angle, it could have come right back to Edwards at first base because it came back to uh, to Jarrett just around the edge of the out the infield dirt. Dylan Cooper had made three errors all year at third base. This is his third error of the series, Adam. Well, it almost hit the stands on a fly. Well, actually, I think it might have hit the the top of the uh, the retaining wall on a fly. Yes, it was, it was a wild throw. Now we'll see if Datchess wants to run. Climbing is a little slow to the plate. Yeah, Datris, not just baseball, not just basketball. He was actually runner-up Mr. Football in the state of Pennsylvania as a high school quarterback, which is pretty impressive. You think about the history of quarterbacks from the state of Pennsylvania. Yeah, is, is he Western Pennsylvania? Riley takes a strike, you know? Is he Beaver Falls? Williamsport, I don't know. No, Central. I'm, I'm not that familiar with Pennsylvania geography. I drive through Williamsport almost every year. Uh, we have uh, my in-laws have a cottage just south of Buffalo. We drive straight up through the center of Pennsylvania. By the way, pretty drive. Not that I ever want you to drive up to western New York, but if you did, uh, driving north into Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, capital of the, the state, it's really very pretty. A lot of rivers in the central part of the state of Pennsylvania. And uh, the capital sits right in front of you. Williamsport obviously has a lot of history as yeah. the home of the Little League World Series. Forever, you actually drive right past the Little League uh, complex. You look at, you would say, obviously there's some good competition, but Datris and Kinnaman, probably the best two hitters for Carolina and NC State overall both yeah. of them from the state of pennsylvania oh really uh you know look i was going to engage you in the conversation about uh best two hitters for north carolina and nc state hit and run works to perfection datras put on the brakes at second now here comes the throw to third good tag by cooper great throw by Dethridge and right that's bad base running by Datris, though. It was a hit and run and then stop from Datris, and he didn't think that that ball was going to get past Jarrett. Well, once you make, the, once you stop, you got to know who the guy in uh, in right field is, and that was a great throw. I think they're. Uh, I'm not surprised. Yep. They're they're looking at it. I think they're going to overturn that. I agree. I think that's going to be, uh, I think Datris was safe at third base. Yeah, based on that one look, I'm not even sure if Cooper got the tag down. The well, that's possible. But a gr still a great throw. It's still bad base running by, uh, by Datris. I mean, once you stop, you might as well just stay put. And it's kind of a waste of a hit and run if you do. I understand that, but... And we'll see it again here. And right there, I he's think safe. he's on the bag. Yeah, he's safe. And again, I'm not sure if Cooper ever tagged him. Yeah, we'd have to see another angle to see if Cooper uh, kind of grazed the side of his body, but... Yeah, safe. He said should be overturned. So this is the second time that Datris has had a a piece running right uh, replay here. We had to play it first on the bunt, captain replay, and now a third. 
So now North Carolina will be out of challenges, right? No, they'll get this one right. Oh, they get this one right. Well, do you automatically get it back? Yeah, you can get another one. Or, in general, the umpires can just determine amongst themselves uh, that they want to look at a play. Then why don't they just do that anyway? I'm going to be combative about this. I can tell. Still a great throw by Deathridge. And they will overturn the call. And once again, they got the call right. That's why you do it. Well, they replay, replay assisted in getting this call right. Replay did not assist the last time. They got it right the first time. But I would be in favor of not needing replay on that. Just, you know, well, it's okay. Look, big, big, big difference between runner on second and two out and second and third and one out. And North Carolina State's bullpen is going to start Got a bunch of guys stretching down there. Remember uh, Ken Kleiman threw over almost 50 pitches on Friday. And now he's in a little bit of a tough spot with second and third and one out. Here in the top of the fifth at NC State trying to stay in the game. I mean, it's a long way to go. But you've got Freeman, who's had a big series. He's a right-handed batter. You don't have to give in to him. You have a lefty up uh, behind him in Inkland. It'll be interesting to see who gets up for NC State. I know it's strange. I know he's your closer. Kind of wouldn't be surprised if it was Joe O'Donnell for NC State, even though we're in the fifth inning. Freeman has driven in two of the three Tar Heel runs today. One with a pop-up. And then last time in the third with a single. Infield is in. And he gets to draw in infield last night. Remember, Brandon Riley got that two RBI single that really, later turned into the game-winning runs. Just really poked it through the middle. Such a big hole between the second baseman and the shortstop in the, in the middle of the diamond. Really put a lot of pressure on the pitcher to field his position. That's inside on Freeman. It's a good pitch. Just missed inside. Tie him up. You can go back there. Again, with first base open, you can get out of the inning with one swing of the bat. Breaking ball. And Freeman kept his weight back enough to get a piece. 400 with runners in scoring position. And once again, Carolina has a chance to extend that lead. See something under his hands here. They were set up. Conley was set up away. Chopper to first. Edwards, his only play is to first, and it's a third RBI for Freeman. Good base running by Datris, crack of the bat. It was probably a contact play. Uh, but once that ball was chopped into the ground, Edwards had no play at the plate. Datcher's got away quickly. In the grand scheme of things, a positive situation right there. Although I'm not entirely sure why Riley did not advance from second. If Datris is away quickly, why isn't Riley? Ben Kasparius. Pinch hitter for North Carolina, Ben Kasparius. This was Clemente Inkland's spot against the right-handed starter, Johnny Piedmont, but now with Kleiman in. They'll look to the two-way player, Kasparius, who was putting on a show in batting practice today. Saw him hit a few balls out. That's not runs allowed in eight of 
Kent Kleiman's last 10 outings. It's also where uh, the, the absence of somebody like a Michael Beeline today, uh, somebody who is a starter who could give you length as a long yeah. man, uh, really hurts the Wolfpack. Yeah, we know Beeline will not be used today. Nope. They're going to rest him for this weekend. And Kleiman certainly does not want to walk the two-out pinch hitter. This will be his 41st pitch. He's into his third inning of work. That run's not earned because Datris reached on the air by Dylan Cooper. Second error of the day for the Wolfpack. Pack had two last night. Again, the wild pitches, they have given away runs mm -hmm. in this series. This is going to be a tough play, and he gets into center field. Kasparius off the bench and into the stat sheet in RBI, and it's 5-1 to one, North Carolina. Yeah, that ball was hit hard, just uh, pounded into the ground. You can see the overspin, too, when it hit the, uh, the infield dirt out behind second base. But it really, uh, you know it's hit hard if you pound it into the dirt in front of home plate, and the next time it hits the ground, it's basically in the outfield grass. So second run allowed by Kleiman. That run will also be unearned. But that's just the counting. Roberts one for two with his stolen base. Nobody up in the NC State bullpen. Yeah. Counting on Kleiman to get out of this inning. So Roberts can throw on the run. We established that an inning or so ago. And look how nimble. Light on his feet. He jumped. Jumped over. The offering by Kleiman. We see Kleiman at 45 pitches now in this one. And as we mentioned, he got extended on Friday as well. He threw 46 on Friday. So it's almost he's closing in on 100 pitches for the weekend. Almost thrown as many pitches as Brian Brown did. Yeah, now he's starting to get in competition with Austin Berger. <laughs> it's close. Really think that uh, Elliot Avent is just hoping that Kleiman can get out of this inning and then probably start fresh with somebody else in the sixth. But the game's in danger, really, of getting away from NC State. Kleiman rears back and strikes out Roberts to end the inning. But North Carolina gets two more. An error and a couple of hits. Riley and Kasparius come through. 5-1, Tarheels. Here's another look at the ACC standings. Again, entering today, North Carolina up a game on Clemson. And up a couple games on Duke, two and a half on the Blue Devils. Clemson having surpassed NC State now. And they are looking to sweep Virginia. You see the Cavaliers way down there towards the bottom of the Coastal Division standings. A little surprising to see them having such a down year. Caden O'Brien back out there here in the bottom of the fifth for the Tar Heels. And this has been really strong from him. You know, we talked about how with Josh Hyatt out North Carolina certainly had a few trusted arms, but not as many. And when your starter goes out after one inning, right. you need 
performances like this one from O'Brien. And if he can get through this fifth inning, it deserves a huge pat on the back. I'm sure that the the dugout oh, yeah. will be fired up. Yeah, look, uh, I mean, uh, what did Tyler Baum got just three outs, right? Yeah. Uh, give up the leadoff home run, then a walk or a hit batsman. And they, uh, they went to the bullpen right away. Uh, but look, you know, uh, this is why it was such a, so important for Austin Bergner to pitch as well as he did last night for UNC. Because Ber- Bergner essentially allowed you uh, the freedom of having a fresh bullpen right. for today. So if Baum doesn't have it, you can go to the bullpen and you know you've got five, maybe even six options uh, out of the pen. And you might not even need that many the way O'Brien is pitching. Yeah, O'Brien's season-long appearance and career-long, therefore. Uh, four and a third against UNCW back on February 20th. Yeah, that's a long time ago. <laughs> and that was a start. Right. That was a start. He's made two starts, I believe. Yes. So, uh, but I think the other start was maybe three innings. Two and two-thirds. So his longest relief appearance has been three innings. And now... Today, three and a third. Big swing and a miss from Edwards. Baum hit him in the first. He flew out to center against O'Brien in the third. And he gets him again. It's a max effort delivery from O'Brien. But... He's pitching as well now in his fourth inning of work as he did when he came in. I mean, I would argue that he's pitching better now in his fourth inning of work as he did when he came in because he labored a little bit Yeah, when he first came in. Oh, he's picked up some steam, it seems like. You know, those two runs that Carolina got in the top half of this inning, he's going out there with a shutdown mentality. And you see he's challenging hitters, and they're not touching it. Patrick Bailey is just uh, struggling at the plate today. Sometimes when you give a guy a day off, he might want to just give him the whole day off. I wonder if Patrick Bailey has got a little fatigue. But there's got to be something up with Brad Debo if they give Bailey the day off and they don't go to Debo behind the plate. He's got to be dealing with a little bit of an injury or something. Not that Jack Conley's not a capable catcher because he is. From 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. And I can't tell you how many times you see that in baseball. I don't know what it is. Some people attribute it to a lack of of focus or something. I don't think that's what that was. You get two quick outs. Yeah. And then you walk the next batter. Uh, I mean, O'Brien was strike one, strike two on Bailey. Looked like it might be good morning, good afternoon, good night. And instead, he's on first. And now Deathridge has been the one guy that has had success at the plate yes. today for NC State. See if uh, Brock can keep his front side in. Five straight out of the strike zone now for O'Brien. I mean, a homer and a double. He has... 67% of it, the NC State hits today. That's like two-thirds. It's exactly like two-thirds. And the, uh, you, I would argue that the, the double was hit harder than the home run. Home run was a little wind-aided. I mean, he made, obviously, solid contact the other way into kind of a jet stream. By the way, the wind has kind of shifted, it looks like, and now blowing out towards right. Six in a row out of the strike zone. And you see, we told you it's, it's blowing out today. It's changed directions a little mm-hmm. bit, but it, it stayed moving pretty swiftly. Looks like a maybe a two-club win, too, for those people who play golf. Deathridge puts a charge into another. Does Riley have enough room? He does not. Two home runs in the game for Brock Deathridge. We saw him go to left field, opposite field. This one to straightaway center. Wow, and Brock Deathridge finds it. He finds it. That was a good piece of hitting. You get a guy who's been uh, out of the strike zone six in a row. That pitch 
up in the zone, out over the plate. They just put a good swing on it. Just let nature take its course there. Look at that. Just a little bit above belt tie, outer half. JT Jarrett trying to push a bunt down the first baseline. That's similar to what Dylan Cooper did. If you're going to do that, you're going to push the bunt. You can't push it to the first baseman. You have to push it past the pitcher. Last time Jarrett was up, he smoked a ball towards third. Would have scored a couple runs yep. and it got through. Datcheris took it away. That would have tied the game, actually. It would have. Yeah, third base, if I'm playing North Carolina, I'm trying not to hit it to third base. <laughs> hit it somewhere else. Keep it away from Datris. Yeah. Hey, we had our first home run with a man on base, though. How about that? I think 10th home run, we finally had somebody on base. O'Brien and half the Carolina infield was halfway to the dugout right there. Like, uh, especially Ike Freeman at shortstop. He was almost to third base, thought it was strike three. Thought that one was strike three also. Wonder if uh, Kevin Sweeney noticed any of that. Payoff pitch. Got him to chase. So O'Brien does finish off the fifth inning and picks up his fourth strikeout. But the story, the two-run home run by Brock Dethridge, three extra base hits today. He has been the NC State offense. We'll take another look at this swing from Dethridge. And this is off of that batter's eye in center field, which from there it doesn't look that far back. Right. That's well behind uh, the center field fence. That's a, uh, first of all, slightly opposite field, which is, you know, 25, 30 feet to the left of dead center. But that's a high line drive. That's just, that's a good piece of hitting. Didn't try to, uh, to do too much with it. Again, he's a strong kid, made good contact, and the wind helped him. The wind is, uh, is, was blowing pretty hard out to center there. Now we've spoken about his speed. Everyone knows oh about God. his speed. Uh, earlier, the throw to third base, the call that was overturned, but he showed off the Great arm. Throw. Great throw. As Inweiler chops one foul. And you see... Uh, <laughs> A good word to describe Brock Dethridge, a word that scouts would use, toolsy. Oh, he He's got it. all the tools. Yep. Just needs to make, uh, just to refine his hitting stroke. Probably needs to uh, learn to stay, keep his uh, front, side, front side closed a little bit more. When, you're, uh, when your front shoulder flies open, you're vulnerable to the really the outer half of the plate. Both of his home runs today the opposite way. So Kleiman is now in his fourth inning of work for the second time this weekend. Yeah, nobody in the bullpen. And he strikes out Inweiler. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Kleiman. So after it looked like he was struggling there in the fifth, Maybe is starting to find his second win. Well, I, look, I, I think when a uh, when a guy starts to get tired, sometimes you get. I said earlier, you start to get a little bit more movement. I'd like to see him uh, live off his curveball a little bit. Curveball's got good sharp break. This ball squared up by Gahagan, but foul. But again, you see where uh, where Kleiman's working now, trying to work to. Uh, inside to right-handed hitters. That's where the pitch was to Enweiler. And he's working inner half here to Gahagan. 
Nothing wrong with that pitch. It wasn't a strike, but it's a good pitch. Gahagan 0 for 2. That one almost hit him. He's hit a few balls hard in this series, but it's just two for eight coming into today, so now two for ten. It's this one hard, and it rolls right up Will Wilson's arm and into center field. I would score that a base hit. He hit it hard. It's a base hit, but it's a, uh, they're, they're, they've given an, uh, an error to Will Wilson. I actually didn't think that's the proper call. Yeah? You think that was routine? I mean, I don't think it was routine. I think it was a play he should have made, though. I mean, even if he fields it cleanly, he's going to have to throw across his body or he's going to have to spin. But I agree with the error. It's fine. Officially, it's an error. Would have been a good play. For a guy that's hit some balls hard and hasn't gotten base hits, it's been Adam balls. Right. He'll be a little frustrated. They take oh, the they error took away. It off the board. See, they're listening, Adam. It's fine. And they decided to I'm agree with, you. with you me instead of you. You didn't realize the sway you had. People are paying attention to you. What did Andrew say? Oh, he says base hit. Okay. You know we'll why? You know why? Are you the official score? Because it was a base hit. Let me hit it hard. <laughs> I'll give you that. No. No, that's that's a that's a thankless job being the official score. Then we'll see if. Uh, with the top of the order up, Tesser, Bush, and then Datris again, just one out. See how much rope Elliott Avent gives Ken Kleiman. Because, again, we're in his, he's in his fourth inning of work. You've just gotten a couple of runs to, uh, to claw back in the game. You do have 12 outs to play with, but North Carolina has shown the ability to kind of just – Allow you to stay close and then stretch it back out. And that's what they did yesterday. Yep. They never trailed yesterday. Breaking ball, just missed. Yeah, NC State has not led since that Brett Kenneman double to make it four to three in the fifth inning on Friday night. Right. Ooh, good move by Kleiman. That was close. That was a quick uh, sidearm throw, just stepped off and just snapped it. I think Elliot Avent might want this challenged. And he might have a good case. I think he might have gotten his hand in there ahead of the sweep tag. Do we have another angle? Is that the only angle we've got? Replay number three. Let's let's see what we have. What well, is Sunday after the all? Previous play is under review. And this is a big play. If Gahagan is out, if this is overturned, it's the second out of the inning. There's a true two strike count on Tesser, and perhaps they can get climbing through this inning rather easily. That's a good throw by uh, Kleiman, by the way. Good move. Again, the call is safe, so we have to have something definitive here. And I think he's. In I there. don't know if that's definitive from that angle. At least I don't think so. I think he got back. He was leaning. Whoops. I think we're going to be able to see anything from that from that angle now. Probably need an angle behind first base. At what point is his hand on the bag and what point is the tag applied? Yeah, hand on the bag, tag applied. Bang bang, nothing nothing to me screams safe, so you got to go with the call on the field. You see, yeah, you you can't you can't overturn based on that replay. Or it screams out, I mean. Nothing nothing on that play screams out to me. I don't think they're going to change it. Safe. And the call is upheld. 
Again, not, but it's, not, not a fan, but... It, it's absolutely worth a challenge if you're Coach Avent. Oh, though, sure. Because absolutely. it was close, and if you can... I mean, you're trying to get climbing as many yep. outs as possible. Wind is now shifted back out towards left field. You see Tesser way up on the plate, and he got jammed his last time up against Kleiman, grounded out to second. Kleiman's been working in to right-handed batters a lot. Clemen really, really worried about Gehagen at first base. Fourth or fifth time he's thrown over. Six. Well, he's thrown 60 pitches to the plate. Add in another 10 to first base. Yeah. It's been a taxing day for Kent Kleiman. I tell you what, though, his velocity still looks good. Yeah, no, I mean, he's still throwing Kleiman's strikes. Been fine. He looks strong out there. But as he got extended on Friday, that's when the Tar Heels were able to strike. Tesser trying to hang tough until he gets something he can hit. And he can't hit the breaking ball. And that's been his best pitch today. I, I think he probably got away with that one there because that was out over the plate. We see it again. Yeah, it wasn't a real sharp break, but it had some movement on it. Also, probably a little harder than the uh, the other curveballs he's he's thrown. That might have been more of a slider. Bush takes the first pitch curveball, sends it into right field. Second hit of the inning for the Tar Heels, and his first hit of the day. And now the best hitter for North Carolina and Kyle Datris, who has no trouble getting on base, but he has, uh, he has also been the, what, the beneficiary of, uh, of an error yep. uh, that was uh, by uh, Dylan Cooper. And then he has been involved in the first two replays. That's the biggest upset, <laughs> that the last replay had nothing to do with Kyle Datris. <laughs> so he's scored six runs now in this series and a big part of that is obviously that he's getting on base a ton but the second part of that is he's two batters in front of Ike Freeman a weak swing there it's like uh, Joe Donald's getting ready so he's been in scoring position when Freeman has come to the plate quite frequently and Freeman has got him home and you're right it is the long-haired closer for the Wolfpack getting warmed up here I almost said I think that's David Lee Roth getting ready but There's strike two well you know it's only the sixth inning but O'Donnell is a guy that can ex it be extended oh, absolutely. and if Kleiman runs into trouble here against uh, against Datris Elliot Avon's going to look to O'Donnell and, O'Donnell and say might as well pitch right oh yeah if if if, if the inning ex is extended I do believe you'll see O'Donnell but that's a heck of a job. Kent Kleiman strikes out the side. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth. New pitcher on the mound for North Carolina. After a great job by Caden O'Brien, Rodney Hutchison, who was actually the starter in the game at the DBAP against NC State. Yeah, the guy's got really good stuff, uh, has been a starter. Uh, pretty much, and I think North Carolina has been kind of waiting for 
Hutchinson to really kind of establish himself. Uh, it hasn't really happened, uh, but uh, they've got 12 outs to get, and they've used both Daniels and Lancelotti in two games already, so I'm sure both of those guys are available, but not for uh, a whole lot of length. And here's a guy that you know might be asked to get him six, maybe even nine outs over the next uh, three innings. We'll see if NC State can uh, can create something. He gives up a lot of hits, doesn't walk a lot of guys, is not a huge strikeout guy. But we'll see. But a, I thought a great great outing from O'Brien until maybe he got tired uh, in the last inning and he gave up the two-run home run to Deathridge. I mean, he was he was one strike from getting out of that inning and ended up giving up the walk. But, yeah, he was really close to being – as this is going to be a foul ball. Uh, four innings. And just the two runs allowed. So given the Tar Heels great length. You know, you said they might ask Hutchison to get six outs, nine outs. I mean, if he pitches well enough, Could finish they it. can ride him the rest of the game. Could finish it. Their Tuesday game against Coastal Carolina was rained out. And so Hutchison didn't start that one. Riley going back, has room, makes the catch. Did Coastal Carolina complain that North Carolina was ducking them, though? Uh, I didn't see a whole lot from okay. Shauna Clears fans on Twitter. But I, I know what heard, you're getting at. I had heard that there was some moaning that NC State was purposefully avoiding a matchup with East Carolina. That's what I heard. I can't confirm that. Yeah, I had was, sources. There was some uh, some complaining on Twitter, but isn't that what sources. you do on Twitter? Twitter is for complaining. Um. Steven Patera in to pinch hit for JT Jarrett. Ball was hit pretty hard, by the way, by Conley. Yeah, I don't know if the Coastal Carolina fans, you know, they've won a national championship a couple years ago. I don't know if they have that same chip on their shoulder. No, I don't, I don't think they do. That kind of frees you up. That Coastal Carolina team, I re oh, Patera took one, looked like off the, uh, off the back shoulder, back of the shoulder. But that Coastal Carolina team was just class. It's so typical of baseball that you know, when a team gets on a roll, and that was a good baseball team. They had some some players who were drafted pretty high. But when you get on a roll, man, sometimes momentum just takes over. I apologize. I said for JT Jarrett. What I meant to say was Dylan Cooper. That would be the correct information, which is hey, my job. Accuracy To is, give you the accurate information. Accuracy is important. So I apologize. But it is Patera who's hit by the pitch in the nine-hole spot. And now we're back to the top of the order. So was that an actual train or was that a sound effect? I don't think we have trains that close to here, do we? Train tracks right behind us. Are they? I'm so familiar with the surrounding areas. Josh McLean has been quiet today. He's 0 for 3 with a strikeout. The ACC's leader in hits entering the weekend. It's a big inning for NC State. Scoring two in the last inning, then getting a zero put up from Kleiman. O'Brien is out of the game. And again, like we said, if Hutchison can get some momentum, they'll ride him the rest of the way, likely. Uh, but if NC State makes this inning very difficult on Hutchison, Carolina really doesn't want to make a move in this sixth inning. No, not at all. Now, the reason you, brought, you bring Hutchinson in is to For give some you length. some length. Yeah, you're trying uh, to build a bridge at least. And uh, McLean still probably in the back of his mind thinking about the, his at-bat in the second inning with a couple of runners in scoring position. He couldn't get him in with one out. A hit batter and a walk as NC State in business here. And now there's some trouble. You got a right-handed pitcher on the mound who's having trouble locating. You have uh, Brett Kinnaman coming up. 
one of the uh, one of the guys on the watch list for the Golden Spikes Award for the best player in college baseball. And I'm not putting him in, you know, as a favorite to win that award, but he is one of the most dynamic hitters in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And behind him, you've got Will Wilson. And I think we're uh, we're having a little bit of a delay game. Robert Woodard, the pitching coach, will walk out to the mound. Slow walk. We'll see how uh, how quickly anything happens here. Oh, we ben are. Kasparius in the bullpen. And he came in the game as a designated hitter, obviously still in the lineup. Got an RBI single. The, as a DH, because yeah. he pinch hit, and he'll come in. So now, if I'm not mistaken, if I have the rules correct, Carolina loses the DH, do they not? Yes. Yes. But they're waiting to make the call. Again, I don't, I don't, I mean, personally, I don't think he's coming in here. We're going to find out in a second. Yeah. We're going to stick with Hutchison. Kasparius did pitch uh, in this series. Friday, did. And pitched on Wednesday against Western Carolina. The uh, home plate umpire is uh, very generous with time allowed for first conversations at the mound. Good take by Kinnaman. 0 for 3 today. We've talked about his struggles in the series. Had the big hit on Friday. That has been it. Yeah, he's up in a, uh, he knows he's, he's relied upon. Easy to be very anxious at the plate. And that's baseball. It's a momentum thing. Yep. You know, at some point, in a college baseball season, every, every hitter is going to go through at least a couple of slumps during the season. Sure. Some guys last the whole season. Uh, but for good hitters, they'll go through a couple mini slumps. I went through uh, one prolonged slump that lasted about four years. Career-long slump. Yeah. Well, it's a 2-0 count here from Kenneman. Come to think, come to find out, it just wasn't very good. Takes a strike. It's so okay. on the on the one hand, Carolina has pretty much been able to bank on getting him out. On yeah. the other hand, he's got 13 home runs at him. NC State is one swing away from having the lead here. Good pitch. Kenneman was thinking about it too. Look how deep, look how deep Brandon Riley is playing in right field. He started the game in center, moved over to right, and Weiler's now in the game in center field. Brandon Riley is only about 15 feet in front of the warning track. Ooh, that ball is close. So far in this inning, I mean, you can't hit a ball over Brandon Riley's head. No, you cannot. That stays in the ballpark. There is there is such a thing as playing too deep. Fly ball start of the inning. Hit batter. Walk. And a big pitch here. We'll do it again. Out in front. Just got a piece. get the feeling if you're Hutchinson and you, th you can throw an off-speed pitch here. You might uh, you might get Kinnaman tied up in knots. Another foul ball. They say the longer the at-bat goes, the more the advantage goes to the hitter. Okay. Is there data on that? I mean, I could see it both way with the uh, Brandon Belt for the Giants at the 21 pitch at bat and made it out. I mean, that's that's a great at bat. He struck him out. That was ball four, too. It looked like that pitch took a little off. Ball was diving down and away.
And now one of the best hitters for the Wolfpack. Will Wilson's up. He, he has hit almost everything hard today. Kenneman has now been struck out seven times in the series. <laughs> That ball looked like it went through Will Wilson. Infield swung around again playing Wilson as a pull hitter, Gahagan is almost directly behind the second base bag. Yeah, he's sliding back over a little bit more toward the normal spot. Over. Big hole between first and second on the right side of the infield. You saw the movement on the strike three of Kenneman oh, yeah. on Hutchison's fastball. I mean, it's anything but flat. No. And they're having a tough time putting the barrel on it. That looked like a two-seam fastball that he got Kenneman on. Because it was it, it was a fastball. It wasn't quite the, uh, the highest velocity. But you can see the downward action. And he struck out Wilson, who falls over. Swinging out of his shoes, strike out of Kenneman, strike out of Wilson, and really that's been the story in this series. Yep, and that was a good pitch again, very similar to what we just saw to Kenneman. Looked like a two-seam fastball, moves down and in. North Carolina out hitting NC State eight to four and up two in the runs department. He's Adam Gold, I'm Andrew Sanders, and there's Kent Klein. He's kind of been the third member of our broadcast crew. It's like Jason. He's, he's been <laughs> on the mound for so long. We can't get rid of Kent Kleinman. He was effective the last inning. And I like to see him uh, stay with his, with his curve ball, work off that. There is a decent chance that he's starting this inning just to face Riley. Just to face the one hitter. O'Donnell's been throwing. In fact, I'm, I'm pretty confident yeah. in that prediction. Uh, he's, O'Donnell's now done throwing, and I think he's just, at this point, waiting. If you're just tuning in, NC State got a start from Johnny Piedmont. He went two and two-thirds innings. Kleiman is trying to get his 11th out here. Piedmont allowed three hits, three earned runs. He walked two. He struck out one. So far, Kleiman has not allowed an earned run. No, the two runs that he gave up in the fifth were unearned. Full count. Riley's had two base knocks today. Four for nine in the series. He's drawn three walks as well. Make it four walks. We'll see if there's any movement in the uh, NC State dugout. This first stop, number eight, Ike Freeman. There's a lot of people looking around. It does appear that Kleiman will be allowed to face Ike Freeman. O'Donnell's still throwing. That surprises me. Because you're right, O'Donnell had stopped throwing. It was just, looked to me like he was just waiting.
the series of right-handed batters coming up. Freeman, Kasparius, Roberts, and Weiler, Gahagan. And Tesser. It, not until yep. Michael Bush that you have another lefty. So we're in a string of six straight right-handed batters. Yeah, I think O'Donnell's coming in here. I'm just a little bit surprised that they didn't have him ready to go. Well, I, mean, I don't think he, there was any question he was ready. He had stopped throwing and was just out in the bullpen bouncing a ball. But maybe he wasn't ready. a big spot. The Wolfpack have clawed back in the game. And here comes number nine. Over 800 wins at NC State in 22 years. Tremendous. He has built here, not that there wasn't a good baseball program here before, because there was. Uh, but, I mean, he's been here when I got here back in 1998, Avent had just essentially taken over a couple of years, just, what, two years into his, uh, into his stay. And NC State has been just a really solid college baseball program. And, you know, the... Think about uh, that over 800 wins, 22 years, you're getting about 40 wins a year. It's been tremendous. On pace for that again this season. College World Series trip. And, you know, it's funny, there's a lot of, uh, you, you're familiar with the NC State stuff, right? Some people use a different word. Yeah, there's a poop emoji involved. Um, and I think it probably has manifested itself more in baseball than any other sport. When you think about so many of the weird things that have happened to NC State on the baseball field, you go to the... Uh, we talked about Coastal Carolina's national championship came through here and you could argue that they should not have continued the game, right? Sure. Right? You could absolutely make that argument. They had the, uh, what, eight-run lead at TCU a couple of years prior to I'm before sure, that? I'm sure NC State fans would love for you to keep going over that, but we've got to take a break. We'll be right okay. back. NC State going to the bullpen for the second time today. There's the numbers on Joe O'Donnell. No, that is not a typo. That is his real ERA. It's crazy. He was allowed one earned run this year. One. And that was about two months ago. It's against No, it was more than that. It's against Canisius on March 4th. He has allowed one run. One of the best pitchers. Forget about closing. One of the best pitchers in college baseball. The Golden Griffins will get you. Mike Freeman gave that his best cut. I don't believe he's cut his hair in four years, O'Donnell. Good flow. Tremendous flow. <laughs> this will argue, arguably be his game the rest of the way as long as NC State can stay in it. Yeah, I think similar situation as Hutchison for North Carolina. As long as he fares well, yeah. might finish it. Wolfpack kind of bailed Hutchinson out, although he, uh, I thought Rodney m made two really, really good pitches to strike out both Kinnaman and Wilson. O'Donnell's kind of wild and high coming in. Runner was going. 
And luckily for Brandon Riley, that ball was hit so high it gave him time to get back to first base. Freeman had done a lot of damage yeah. in the whole series, so Knocked that's a big out. Three runs today. That's the first at bat that he didn't get an RBI. Now Ben Kasparius, who had an RBI single back in the fifth inning. That was that chopper through the middle. And who might be the next guy in to pitch if the Tar Heels need him. Big freshman, 6'1", 214 from Westport, Connecticut. Tar Heels have done well with Connecticut products. Matt Harvey was a Connecticut product. You're a Mets fan, right? Yes. <laughs> we don't have to. We don't have to. That delve, is correct. We don't have to delve any further into that topic. Looking forward to Harvey's next outing, which actually might have come last night. I didn't see a box score. I did see a score at one point where the Padres had an 11-0 lead on the Mets. Jonas Cespedes hit a home run to a garbage can that had a lid on it. Yeah. Google that. That's, uh, that's a good tease. <laughs> that's a good tease. That's, you just click, I mean, you, you click baited me. Didn't now have I, now a complete, I'm going to go Google it. Didn't no. have a complete lid. It had, there was an opening in the side, but... Still an unusual occurrence. 2 1 count on Kasparius. And again, that slider hangs high on O'Donnell. Now, he hasn't thrown it for a strike, but if he keeps leaving it up there, even if it's, if it's not a strike, uh, someone, maybe Kasparius, is going to make him pay for it. Is there a zone up? He hasn't had that many at bats. He does not have a home run. He has three extra base hits in 37 official at-bats. But for a guy who hasn't been up that many times, he's driven in 11 runs. I don't know why the signal was made at second base because that was ball four. <laughs> well, you need practice. I was about to say something I about, actually thought it, was about a strike. it, too, because Conley still threw down there. Yeah, I thought it was a strike. And Barry Chambers at second base with an emphatic out some uh, signal. Clearly it was not a strike because it was not called one. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't understand what the debate is here. It, and... and Home plate umpire Kevin Sweeney simply put up his, his hand and said, yeah, it's ball four. Ball four. What are we doing? What are we doing, guys? And why are we talking? And now, now Mike Fox wants an explanation. I, I, he doesn't need an explanation. No. There's, there's two guys on base, and there's one out. You don't have any left. The crowd is giving Mike Fox a hard time for challenging, reminding him he doesn't have any challenges left. He doesn't have to challenge anything. Why are we sending the guy off the base? I'm at a loss. I'll take an explanation if... Uh... Did he slide past the bag? Well, I think that was the out call initially, is that uh, it was after... Let's see if we can see. Okay, replay. well, I guess technically yes, but there should not have. They shouldn't have even had a play. Okay, so technically he walked and then was on the bag and came off. Wow. And, and actually, I don't even think he was off the bag, but he doesn't have a challenge, so they can't can't go back and challenge it. So I think on that look, was he not off the bag? You didn't think so? I think uh, was it, was it Patera or Wilson that was that had the throw? I think he kind of. I tell you what, nudged I, him off the base. I have never seen. A walk with a man on first end up in, in, in a, out number two like that. What amounts to a caught stealing. Essentially, yeah. So because he was moving, think of it as he jogged to second, 
right. and then just happened to hop off the base and then was that hidden ball trick or something, right? It's essentially the same thing. I've never seen that before. It's just weird. That's just a very weird occurrence. You watch enough baseball, you, you, you see something you've never seen before. I just saw something I've never seen before. But it benefited the Wolfpack. Oh, that's a huge second out. It's tremendous. It goes from first and second and one out to a man on first and two outs. And Cody Roberts, who has homered in the series. Three one pitch catches the zone full count. That's where O'Donnell really wants to live. Well, Kasparius with a full count and two out. He's going to take off here. And if it's a walk, he's got to be careful to stay on the back. Roberts strikes out looking. Same pitch, back-to-back -back times. So Riley drew a leadoff walk, but the Tar Heels do not score in the seventh time to stretch here in Raleigh. We're going to take a look at this play again because it's one of the more odd plays that you'll see. And also, we're trying to see here if Brandon Riley did indeed come off the second base bat. So it's a walk officially. He takes second here. And his foot is off of the bag right there. Does he get the toe back in? Barry Chambers says no. And that's when he made that emphatic out call. See, I think he did get his foot back there. And then Patera nudged his foot off the base. Again, whatever. That's fine. That's exactly this, what I don't like about replay, but we didn't have to re we didn't review that because Mike Fox didn't have a didn't have a challenge left. Evan Edwards leads off the inning here for the Wolfpack after the stretch. Yeah. Edwards Bailey Deathridge. It's just a bizarre play all around. I've watched baseball since I was five. I have never <laughs> seen that ever. Remember the game at the DBAP where there was a disputed double play with the question was, was the bag touched first or was Steven Patera touched first at second base? And yeah. it seemed like it should be pretty cut and dry double mm -hmm. play, but depending on your order of operations, Absolutely. Right, do you touch the bag first or do you touch the player first? Or uh, they, they actually looked at it for a while. There's just been some odd things in this series. It was, it was over in the press box and former SID for baseball at NC State, Bruce Winkworth, says, that's why I don't believe Sunday games should count as much as Friday games. <laughs> it's just, it, Sunday, Sundays in college baseball is for the weird. Bruce is great. He's the best. Edwards got a piece here. Wolfpack let uh, Rodney Hutchinson off the hook a little bit in the last inning, although he did make two great pitches, running, sinking fastballs away from Brett Kinnaman and in to Will Wilson to strike him out. Hammered into right, and it's a leadoff single. With this game still 5-3, I really don't believe that Mike Fox will give Rodney Hutchinson all that room all that much room. He's a pitcher that lives on the edge more than he needs to. They got away with it last inning. We'll see what happens here. Patrick Bailey has homered in every single game against Carolina this year. He has not homered today. In fact, he hasn't put a ball in play. Two strikeouts and a walk. And he just hasn't really looked like he's been on any pitches either. That's the other thing about it. Almost looks like he's had some, a lot of tired at bats today. A 
the way you gave the uh, the promo for the Yankees and the Angels tonight, the Yankees have won eight in a row. Remember when all the questions were being thrown around? Nine and nine, what's wrong with the Yankees? Well, not, apparently not a lot. It's baseball. People liked, you know, I I'm know. sure. I'm sure there were a lot of questions about North Carolina when they were seven and seven this year. No question about it's that. Early, it's early in the season. Mm -hmm. It's baseball. It takes a little bit of time. Bailey checked his swing. So it's a 3-1 count. Brock Dethridge is on deck. That was the best swing for Bailey all day. Dethridge already with two home runs today. So Hutchison's looking at Bailey like, look, I gotta get this guy. Yeah. Does not get him. Two on, nobody out. NC State's hottest hitter at the plate. His day today, home run, double home run. See, he has been the NC State offense. He's driven in all three runs. The Wolfpack has done Nothing, zero, nada, with runners in scoring position today. Yeah, 0 for 6. The Wolfpack have just five hits. Deathridge has three of them. That ratio's dropped, though. He, at one point, had two-thirds of their hits. Now he has just 60% right. of their hits. Three-fifths if you're scoring at home. Wind still blowing out here. Straight away center field now. He did not have a good Friday or Saturday. Nope. But you got to think his confidence right now is through the roof. And his last two hits have come against a left-handed pitcher. It's a big spot. You can't be too anxious. You have a pitcher out there struggling to find a strike zone. And nobody out. Two and two. You know, Carolina jumped out to a two-run lead in the top of the first inning. To me, this feels like the first time that NC State has had some energy mm -hmm. and had some momentum since that point. Yeah, and State has kind of wasted some opportunities. You had the second and third, one out when Josh McLean popped up to second. They didn't get anything out of. Hutchinson wriggled off the hook last inning, and he's put himself right back on it now. So, yeah, these are opportunities you can't really waste. You can't waste too much of them. You're not going to cash in on all of them, but you have to cash in on your share, and really the Wolfpack haven't been able to do that. Underneath Hutchison's glove, and Deathridge just too fast to be doubled up. The heels get one out. And that shift helping, because if you're not in that shift, that ball probably squirts up the middle. Oh, yeah, you're in double play depth, so Gehagen was over shaded towards the bag. Oh, no, it wasn't Gehagen. It was uh, it was Freeman at short. <laughs> that was odd double play depth. And here is Shane Shepard to pinch hit in JT Jarrett's spot.
to me, this is the the chance at a big fly as much as anything else. Pinch hit a senior for a freshman, lefty for a righty. Two zero. You would think you might get Deathridge moving at some point in this at bat, but in a two zero count, probably not, just, you probably just let Shepard hit this fastball. Yeah, not in a two zero count, but it, you really don't run a risk of running yourself out of an inning with Deathridge. I think that was a gift to Rodney Hutchinson right there. That looked like it was off the plate away. That was a better pitch than the, than the one they called a strike, I think. Yeah, I thought so, too. Maybe a little bit of a makeup here. Yeah, maybe that was ah, down. A little low. 3-1. Well, I don't know what you're waiting for there. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a uh, it wasn't a great pitch for Shepard to hit, so you can make an argument that he laid off a pitcher's pitch because that looked like it was kind of outside, you know, corner at the knees. Diving catch made in shallow left, and Edwards will not tag. Not deep enough for Shepard. And Hutchison really gets a clutch second out with the help out and left of Dallas Tesser. Not really sure what Edwards is doing there because he actually left early and then had to go back to the base. And then once once Tesser goes into his dive, I mean, I guess you down two runs, you don't want to risk making the third out at home. And you got to hope that is his collarbone all right. Nice catch, and initially, you know, I guess you got the adrenaline going. Popped right up. He didn't. He didn't feel it initially. They're looking at that shoulder. It wasn't. It wasn't the throwing shoulder. It was the. It was his glove hand. Nice play. So that's another opportunity that NC State has kind of failed with. A runner at third base and less than two out, and you can't get the run in. McLean back in the second. Shepard here. And we're going to take a break as they tend to Dallas Tesser. We'll be right back here on the ACC Network Extra. You're on cricket. And Conley did go around. And you wonder if maybe uh, Roberts and Hutchison got crossed up there because immediately the juniors convene on the mound. Here comes Michael Bush from first base, and as he has pretty much all game, Kevin Sweeney immediately out there to break it up. Hutchison trying to kind of dance through the raindrops here without getting wet, and he has been in trouble in the sixth, in trouble in the seventh, but he's got two away now. More shifting from North Carolina with Gahagan almost directly behind the second base bag. A huge hole between first and second as Bush has to hold Deathridge on. Be surprised if Deathridge doesn't try to take the base. There he goes. Freeman with a nice throw. Ends the inning. So NC State had runners on first and second with nobody out, but do not score in the seventh. Rodney Hutchison gets the job done once again. 5 3 Tar Heels here in the eighth inning. Look around the ACC. Miami 
Trying not to get swept. Their offense has come alive. They had one run over the first two games at Florida State. Uh, just erupted with a 10-3 lead. Duke with a big uh, big lead at Virginia Tech. They're in the top of the ninth. Uh, Blue Devils trying to take that series. Clemson about to win, what, their seventh straight game in conference play now? They have, uh, they have assumed control, it seems, of the Atlantic Division. So uh, State needs a win to keep pace with the Tigers, who are now a game ahead. But at least they can, uh, you know, if they can come back, even create some more separation between them and Florida State, who has crept up on their tail as well. Yeah, that's one area, as you see, defensive change for the Wolfpack. That's fresh, fresh, <coughs> excuse me, freshman David Vasquez in to play third base. Stephen Patera is at second. Jackson Hesterly will pinch hit for the Tar Heels. This is in the eighth spot, so Dylan Inweiler's day is done. Saw him as the DH on Friday night, briefly. He saw a couple of bats, went 0 for 2 with the strikeout, and we haven't seen him since. He had a pinch hit grand slam in the Saturday game against Georgia Tech. Yes, he did. Tied the game. Not a lot of pinch hit grand slams. That was, that's impressive. To tie the game in the eighth inning. And, and really, sweeps are hard to come by in mm -hmm. this league. And if you're going to get a sweep, you usually need something, maybe not usually that dramatic, right? But you need something to go your way sure. that doesn't. Because if you're the better team, you expect to win two of three. But still, winning all three, very difficult. I think that's one area you know we've spoken about NC State's troubles on Friday night. That's been the difference when you look at that those standings. The difference between NC State and, say, North Carolina's Hesterly Walks or Clemson or now Florida State making up a lot of ground right. is the Wolfpack has won every single weekend until today, until this weekend. But Clemson and North Carolina have been able to make up more games because they have been able to get more sweeps. Right. And NC State has just one sweep over Clemson, over Clemson. coincidentally. Uh, but that's the only sweep. They haven't been able to put away some of the bottom tier teams. Right. They would, and part of the reason they haven't been good on Friday nights, they haven't had uh, their, you know, their best pitcher going. Brian Brown has been a Saturday guy all year, and they've just trying to kind of figure out, you know, was it Johnny Piedmont on Friday for a time it was? Is it Michael Beeline? Uh, and I think they're probably going to settle into Reed Johnson, who has looked good uh, and pitched into the fifth inning here against North Carolina on Friday night. But they're going to need some consistency out of that. I mean, you, you're, you're just asking too much from your team to constantly being, you know, put in a position to fight from behind. And you look at this opportunity for North Carolina. We're leading 5-1 to one at one point. NC State cut into that lead. When you have first and second, nobody out, you should get a run in that inning, at least. Looking like they can make it a completely different ball game. Hutchison is able to get out of it, and now here are the heels with the leadoff walk. Hit and run to perfection. Gahagan knocks it into left center field, and I tell you what, I thought there was a chance uh, that the heels might score on that in the hit and run. The old slash play. Yeah, Hesterly, Hesterly was uh, made ahead. Had, just good base running at second base. Uh, Ladowski, that's what. That's why I paused for a second. Oh, they, was, they snuck they, in they Josh pinch Ladowski. Ran. Yeah. The big Ladowski is pinch running? Yes. Uh, but he, good base running. You know, you, when you're off and running, it's easy to just be in stolen base mode. But he was smart, had to play in front of him. McLean got to it quickly, though. So that's a situation where Gahagan, on the first pitch, was squaring the bunt when O'Donnell threw over to first. And the next go round, they took the bunt play off and played hit and run. With a good hitter, especially a veteran hitter, I would do that much more than I would ever bunt. And so especially after the hit and run, here's Carolina where, you know, NC State maybe should have 
cut this lead to one or maybe been tied at this point. And this is what they've been able to do all series. 5-3 game, eighth inning. A little surprised that NC State's infield isn't in with a runner at third. The trading to, uh, a double play for a sixth run. What they really need is a strikeout from O'Donnell. He's ahead 0-2. Th these are the situations that Carol, that uh, NC State has not been good in today. Uh, offensively, getting a guy in from third. Tesser has not been good with runners in scoring position or runners on base. Hitting under 200, 188 with runners in scoring position. But has been a catalyst at the top of the lineup for the Tar Heels. Eight and one since in being installed in the leadoff spot. You could tell that, I, I don't know if it's, I think it was the, the shoulder mm -hmm. that they were looking at. I said collarbone initially, but it, that was really bothering him at first. Mm -hmm. Luckily, now he's feeling well enough to stay in the game. Because he's been such a catalyst, they can ill afford to have him out of the lineup. And O'Donnell gets that strikeout that he needed. Great curveball. Tesser waited on it, too. He stayed back. A little late movement. Usually high curveballs don't end well for a pitcher. But the, there was enough rotation to kind of just get a late break. Michael Bush singled back in the sixth. A ground single in the hole into right field. O'Donnell left that curveball up too, but it was so far off the plate. So O'Donnell got the first part of the formula. He got the strikeout. Looking for the double play now. He's going to have to do it against maybe Carolina's best hitter. Earlier, I think you wanted to get into that discussion more. I said Datris and Kinnaman, but obviously you've got Bush. You've got Will Wilson. There's some good competition there uh, on both teams. I think that if I were facing NC State, the last hitter I would want up is Will Wilson. I know what numbers say, but I would, I would want to stay away from number eight as often as I possibly could. And Bush has been clutch for the Tar Heels. And yeah, the numbers would tell you that Datris gets hits more often yeah. this year than Bush. But he, He's their even, la even last year when he hit 215, he, yep. he got big hits. Yeah, to me, to me, Bush is the guy you have to avoid. Another high curveball for over for a strike. O'Donnell's been throwing a lot of curveballs since coming in. Yeah. Great pitch, paints the inside corner. Back to back strikeouts. Giving O'Donnell a chance here in the eighth. Might have gotten a little help from Conley, framing it well. But that had some arm side run, just kind of floated back in across the inside corner. So as you can see, a, a high percentage of O'Donnell's pitches are going to be those two, right? You've seen kind of that sweeping slider. And then that angle on that fastball, you can see the kind of run that it has. So he can throw both directions on the plate, essentially, and relies on that. And I mean, you see the numbers. It's worked out really well for him all season. Hey, look, I think NC State, if you think about the way Kleiman worked and you're seeing the way O'Donnell has been working, the fact that they're not afraid to pitch inside 
pitching today, if you don't work the inside part of the plate, you're just vulnerable all the time. You can't let hitters get comfortable. You have to be able to work inside. You have to be able to work inside off the plate. Datras hits this ball hard. Kenneman running and he made the catch. What a catch in left field by Brett Kenneman. Little bit of a pair of runs. Little bit of an adventure at first. I think he kind of misjudged it. Boy, such an athlete. Welcome back from break, everybody. Carolina up five to three. Felt like they should have had more in the eighth inning. Should have cushioned that lead. Kahneman on the run. His first step was to his left, Adam. And I thought that <laughs> ball that ball was hit really well by Datchers. I thought it was going to get over his head. Uh, no, that ball was hit on the screws. Uh, but Kahneman is such a good athlete. Sometimes you can overcome your own mistake. Just really misjudge the ball at first. And then maybe kind of even misjudge just how hard it was hit. Because it almost looked like he was coasting back at first and then finally had to turn it on. Uh, but look, maybe NC State can get a little momentum out of getting out of that inning. NC State had given away opportunities in both the uh, home sixth and seventh to get runs off Rodney Hutchinson. Hasn't been able to do it. And North Carolina just had a golden opportunity. First and third, nobody out with top of the order up. Couldn't do it. Both teams trading really good opportunities. Yeah. And we haven't had a run since that bottom of the fifth. But Kenneman will come to the plate in this inning. Steven Patera was NC State's leadoff hitter all last year. And he leads off this bottom of the eighth inning. Patera and played first base for much of last year, too. And look, obviously, plenty of baseball left. Anything's possible. Anything could happen in the ninth inning. But to me, this feels like the inning. For NC State, you're talking about that momentum from that catch. If they're going yeah. to score, I think it's more likely it's in this inning. Momentum from the catch, momentum from the fact that Carolina had a hit and run play on at first and third, nobody out, not able to score. Yeah. 3 2. This is headed all the way down into the corner. Stephen Patera is a good leadoff hitter. Stephen Patera is a good baseball player. Here's what North Carolina in, in shifting for a left-handed hitting Stephen Patera had Gahagan playing so far off the bag. This ball was not hugged right down the line. This ball was hit basically into the position that it should have been. And normally, and you get in the late innings, especially with a two-run lead, you play a little bit more doubles defense. You have your third baseman, first baseman guarding the line. That wasn't even that hard down the line. But good hitting by Patera to go the other way. Hit it hard. Now let's see if Josh McLean can get going. Here comes Coach Fox. Might that be it for Hutchison? He's looking off to the bullpen. Yeah, I think it's going to be, hey, Rodney Hutchinson got him six outs. No matter how it transpired, no, how, no matter how many jams he had to get out of, he got Mike Fox six outs yep. so far. And that's massive. So they will make a change. Again, we can't see into the bullpen personally from right. where we're sitting. So Carolina's going to go with Gasparius. He has not thrown a lot of innings. No. But the freshman who pitched on Friday will get the ball here in a huge spot. This is where not having Josh Hyatt really hurts North Carolina. Right. You've, you've spent Lancelotti. You've spent Daniels two games in a row. Mike Fox is clearly hoping to avoid using one of them. So Kasparius will warm up. We'll look at NC State's remaining schedule. Got a midweek game against Campbell. And then they go out of the conference for a series against William & Mary, Wake Forest, and Florida State. 
And then the ACC tournament right around the corner, May 22nd. So they get Wake Forest at home. And Wake Forest is struggling a little bit. And then they have to go to Tallahassee. And by this point, some of the teams that I think caught Florida State earlier in the year maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe had an easier go of it. You know, Duke went down there and won a couple of games. Uh, and did not lose, actually, because they got washed right. out of the Sunday game. Uh, but now Florida State seems to have it put together. Duke's first sweep at Florida State since, I believe, 1994. Uh, but, yeah, Florida State, again, I think Florida State can absolutely hit. They have a really, really good lineup. But the – yeah, I mean, look, it's it's right there in front of uh, front of NC State. Nick Clemson is obviously a problem in terms of the standings, and it looks like Clemson's going to win again today in Charlottesville. So uh, if State can't climb back and win this game from UNC, then they've got a two-game hole to figure out – with just six conference games left to play. And basically everybody has just six conference games left to play after today. Uh, but the Wolfpack, I mean, to, for me, it's really about getting your best hitters going again. It's about getting, if, if Brett Kinnaman gets going again, I think they'll be fine. They really need that. It's nice to see Brock, Brock Dethridge playing well uh, and driving the ball today. Those are the things that need to happen, I think. And look, he hit the ball hard before. Then it ended up being the force out on the uh, first and second play. So, I mean, he is, he's been locked in tonight. They need to get Josh McLean going today. He'll pitch him backwards and starts with a strike. Kasparis has only thrown eight and a third innings all year long. Pitched pretty well in his one inning on Friday. Did walk one. Bush on a long run makes an over the shoulder catch. Great catch from Bush, but it's a productive out. Man, that is a heck of a catch from a first baseman. Yeah, tremendous play, and it's made even more difficult because he doesn't get the help from the second baseman. Gahagan in the shift was playing so close to second base, he had no hope to get over there. And smart base running, by the way, by Patera. It would be very easy to kind of guess that maybe this ball is not in foul territory because if the ball is fair, Patera's got to be somewhat off the base. And there is, here's a spot for Brett Kinneman to draw one run closer. The Wolfpack have not been good in these situations at all. Hutchinson wriggled off the hook a couple of times. And now we'll see if the freshman Kasparian could do it. Kasparius. 0 for 4, couple of strikeouts. That's what Kasparius is looking for. Good breaking ball. That was, that was sharp. Mike Fox said, Going into the midweek, he said, we got to get him on the mound because we're going to need him down the stretch. Line drive foul. Probably the best swing for Kinnaman all day, even though it's really well foul. At least he barreled it up. Big shift for the Wolfpack. And he strikes out again. Eight strikeouts in the series for Brett Kinnaman. Here comes Patera to the plate. And a wild pitch from Kasparius brings the Wolfpack to within one. Get him in as ever, however you can. And now it's a one-shot ball game for both sides. Hey, 
You know, yesterday and earlier today, it was NC State making those plays, mm -hmm. and Carolina made the errors early on Friday, but hadn't since then. A big miscue there after Kinneman couldn't drive in the run from 90 feet away with only one out. Kasparius looks like he's got something. Sharp breaking ball, good movement. Yeah, I agree. Kind of surprised that he hasn't pitched more this year. There's a trust factor when you get into conference play. I mean, that's a good breaking ball that Wilson yeah. almost missed. As it turns out, the suspension to Hyatt might have opened the door for Kasparius to get more meaningful appearances. Bush again on a long run. This one's hit a little further. And in right field, the catch is made. So NC State gets one. We'll head to the ninth, North Carolina, looking for some insurance on the other side. Back with Adam Gold, I'm Andrew Sanders, ninth inning. And another one-run game. Friday was one run. Saturday was two. Back to one run here. Here's a look at the Tar Heels' remaining schedule. You can see Asheville on Tuesday, and they are out of conference until at Duke Circle at May 11th through 13th. Yeah, they're off the weekend. Yeah. Play a game Tuesday. They don't play again until the following Tuesday. Uh, at Coastal should be a good game. Uh, then they have the three-game series at Durham Bulls Athletic Park for uh, their, another opportunity to get a look at the place that will play the ACC tournament, then they finish against the Seminoles. Tough games remaining ahead for North Carolina. Big inning for Joe O'Donnell. You scratch the run across, you're, you're in a one-run one game. You got to keep the Tar Heels off the scoreboard in this inning. You see if you can go out and tie it up, maybe win it. He'll score three in the ninth last night. And remember, it was Riley who came up with the big hit, which turned into a hit that the Heels needed. And they're thinking about insurance. I mean, back to back to back home runs in the bottom of the ninth for NC State. Carolina would certainly feel a little less tense about it if they had more than a one-run lead. Yeah, the Wolfpack will have Edwards, Bailey, and Deathridge, four, five, and six up in the bottom of the ninth. Kasparius was very effective, very impressive in his relief outing. But if you don't think that Mike Fox will use Brett Daniels, you haven't been paying attention to the way Daniels is used. Three times, twice this year, he's appeared in all three games of an ACC series. Oh, yeah. At Louisville, he, on Sunday, he actually went four and a third innings in the third game. Big strikeout to start the inning as Riley Kays for the first time today. And three weeks later against Wake Forest, he worked three innings of the Sunday game after play, after pitching in both Friday and Saturday's games. The shortstop, number eight, Ike Freeman. He got the win in both of those games, by the way. Two great curveballs from O'Donnell.
poked into center field right at McClain. How good has he been? He's faced 10 batters. Struck out four, he's got eight outs, he's given up a hit, a couple of walks. Home plate umpire Kevin Sweeney says that Kasparius went around. I'll take his word for it. Kasparius may be trying to help out his own cause. He got the win on Friday night. Mm -hmm. He has a big RBI today, a pinch hit roll and he could have a chance to pick up a save. Yeah, that RBI single, that chopper up the middle, that's the difference right now. him again. Tried to muscle up a fastball. That's the pitch that he struck out Bush on earlier. Mm -hmm. Kasperius takes strike three. Front door breaking ball. And if you're the pitcher, as Kasparius is at this point, you really can't argue because you'd like to have that call when you're on the mound. Yeah. I think he got a, uh, I think O'Donnell got a little bit of a break there, but you'll take it, see if you can't win it or tie it at the bottom of the night. Once again, late inning drama here at Doak Field at Dale Park. North Carolina three outs away from sweeping NC State and Raleigh for the first time ever. Wolfpack trying to salvage a game in this series. They have been on the wrong end of a one run and a two run game so far. We didn't think we were gonna have any drama yesterday and then the Wolfpack opened up the ninth inning with back to back to back home runs. It was 8-3 headed to the ninth, ended up 8-6. There was drama of course on Friday and NC State will send up Edwards, Bailey, and Deathridge. All three will be hitting from the left side. All three have hit at least one home run in this series. Edwards had one yesterday. Bailey had one Friday and one Saturday. Deathridge, two tonight. And it is just a one swing game. Wind blowing out to right center field. First pitch swinging into the shift. Freeman stays down on it. One pitch, one out. Kasparius has been effective. He really had Edwards a little bit out in front. Bailey hadn't had too many good swings today. He has walked his last couple of times up. He was aboard when Deathridge hit the home run in the fifth. Out in front. Fly ball 
Left field, Tesser all the way back, makes the catch up against the wall. That's a heck of a play. He was twisting around. He's already jarred himself on the diving catch earlier. Who says baseball is not a contact sport? Tremendous catch. Yep. Ball slicing a little bit off the left-handed hitter's bat. Started the game in right field, now in left. Makes a gigantic play, and now Brock Dethridge, who has been the star today for NC State. Two home runs and a double. He struck out to end the game on Friday. Big shift, although uh, rather Datris is close at third base and over toward the bag. That's if, how you protect against the Deathridge bunt for a base hit. If Deathridge can reach, Brad Debo is on deck, and he will reach. So the tying run to first, the winning run at the plate, a freshman All-American last year, Brad D. Two home runs and a double. He struck out to end the game on Friday. Big shift, although uh, rather Datris is close at third base and over toward the bag. That's yeah. how you protect against the Deathridge bunt for a base hit. If Deathridge can reach, Brad Debo is on deck, and he will reach. So the tying run to first, the winning run at the plate. A freshman All-American last year, Brad Debo, who has struggled this season, has not played a lot in recent weeks. We'll get a pinch hit opportunity here. Hadn't started a game behind the plate in about three weeks. It's been 17 games. No, longer than that. No, he, he started. He was the last person to start other than Patrick Bailey until today when Jack Conley started. Do you risk running with Deathridge here? I do. Deathridge is the leader for NC State in stolen bases. He's got 14. He got a really good arm behind home plate, Cody Roberts. And Carolina wants to talk about this situation. Obviously, with Deathridge's speed and two outs, if you can get him to second base, a base hit for Debo will score him. I mean, I guess you, you could take the bat out of Debo's hands at that point with a right-hander against... Jack Conley. Taylor Sugg, who started on Wednesday, along with Hanson Butler in the bullpen. Taylor Sugg is a uh, starter and has started a bunch of weekend games, but neither of those guys are, I mean, Hanson is effective. He hasn't pitched a ton lately. Doesn't have a lot of innings. But I haven't seen anything from Kasparius that would lead me to believe there's anybody better in the bullpen than the guy on the mound right now. But here's a question. Carolina's shift is so severe. Debo does have good power, but has just one home run this season. If Anything Debo, to the left side might score Deathridge, honestly. If Debo lays, lays a bunt down anywhere away from the pitcher, it's, an, it's a base hit. I mean, the shift is so severe. 
How many timeouts does Carolina have left? Well, Roy, Roy still has a couple <laughs> that he gave Coach Fox. He's been saving them up for a while, right? Yeah, Datris is essentially playing shortstop in double play depth, and he's the third baseman. Look at that defensive alignment. Four infielders in a span of about 115 feet on the right side. Fastballs outside, two and one. Ladowski is in right now, and he is also playing incredibly deep. Ball three. And a ball just got loose from the bullpen. So they'll stop play for a moment. Tarek Malika, kind enough to retrieve that one since there's no third baseman over there. Gasparius blows the fastball by him. Three and one fastball, see if you can hit it. And he got it by Debo. Yeah, Debo, when, when you're not going well, those are the ones, those are the ones that get you. Last year this time, Debo drives that ball. There goes Dethridge. And with Dethridge getting a jump start now, if Debo does hit one to third base, oh yeah, he really might score. Kasperi is trying to close it out. Ball four. So now, the tying run to second, and the winning run on first. Elliot Avent, no doubt, will pinch run for Brad Debo here. We get another look at his pitch. Lawson MacArthur will run. It won't be Jack Conley. Another DH in this series coming in. Terrell Tatum will pinch hit for Jack Conley. North Carolina has two guys warming up in the bullpen. But it does look like neither of them is going to get the call. Again, Kasparius has been good. He has walked a couple of guys. Tatum, a 262 hitter this season. See, no home runs, eight RBIs. The OBP is way up there. Draws a lot of walks. Ball two. Last time we saw Tatum, he got caught looking on three pitches that were probably all out of the strike zone. Datris and Gehagen, a couple of veterans on this team, coming up to Kasparius. This is a freshman versus freshman matchup right now between pitcher and batter. You know both guys... I don't care if you're a sixth year senior, you're gonna have some nerves in this situation, right? No question about it. I'm nervous. He has got a live fastball. 2 0 big cut from Tatum. I mean, that tells you all you need to know about how bright his future is. 3 1 fastball to Debo. Yeah. 2 0 fastball to Tatum. Still got some work to do.
Does it get any better than this? No. Bottom of the very, ninth. Very exciting. One run game. Two on. Two out and a full count. There go the runners. Yeah, good speed on the bases. Even a single in the gap might might win this game for the Wolfpack. Really surprised how deep Ladowski is playing in right. We haven't seen anything from Tatum that would suggest that kind of power. Ball four. Three walks in a row. And at this point, if you're North Carolina, you go to the bullpen. I don't think they have anybody out there unless it's Brett Daniels, and Daniels wasn't warming up before. They had Butler and Sugg. I don't think you have anybody better than this guy out there. Butler, Butler's got a great arm, but he's got 13 walks and nine and two-thirds. Sugg's ERA is almost six. Steven Patera doubled in the eighth to get things started. He scored the fourth run in this game for the Wolfpack. Fourth straight batter that's come to the plate with the game on the line. Bases loaded. After it was two out, nobody on. The catch, by the way, by Tesser right now right. is the difference. It's Kasparius falls behind 2-0. and Completely lost the zone. I thought the 3-2 pitch to Tatum was very close. I was surprised that he took it. Especially after yesterday, the way his last at bat ended. It ended with him arguing the call. It takes some, we'll call it guts, to leave that up to chance. Here's the strike. Kevin Sweeney was ringing that one up before actually got to the plate. Strike two. Big cut. Fly ball right field. Ladowski's under it. North Carolina sweeps NC State and Raleigh for the first time ever. One run game, a two run game, and a one run game. This series delivered some drama for sure. And tremendous. North Carolina, really indicative of the, the kind of baseball they're playing right now. You know, whenever a team is on a hot streak, they oh, get yeah. whatever they need. Got, say, Bergner, quality start on Saturday. Two innings out of Ben Kasparius to close this out on Sunday. They've made enough plays. They're on fire right now. He made it interesting. Maybe got a little call from uh, from Kevin Sweeney on the 2-0 pitch to Patera. Uh, but then, through two quality pitches in a row, uh, the fastball that kind of tied him up to make it 2-2. Uh, and then had Patera a little bit out in front. Hit a lazy fly ball to right field to end it. Uh, but to me, this was about North Carolina taking advantage of their opportunities when NC State really didn't. Uh, and again, as you said, when you when things are going well, you get enough of those opportunities, take enough of the fit. Carolina was not perfect today. They gave State the run. The fourth run was a gift from Carolina with the pass ball or the wild pitch. Um, and they also had some opportunities to score some runs that Joe O'Donnell and Ken Kleinman both worked out of. Frankly, it could have been a lot worse early on. But the, uh, the Wolfpack was able to pitch their way out of jams. And North Carolina got away with Rodney Hutchinson in the, uh, in the sixth and seventh inning when uh, NC State uh, could not push some runs across. Uh, 